what issue do you have with pot? I said, I don't like the dishonesty where people what just say, it cures cancer, it'll end the war on drugs, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's completely harmless. <laughs> and I oh, he's going to do his piss closer. Yeah. No, it's not entirely harmless. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's not without the consequences. Piss, well, <laughs> consequences based on what? I've given you so much leeway there. Yeah. Well, well, how have you? How have you? Ba ba consequences based on what? It literally started from me saying, I probably could I really like it when you go swimming. all the other issues that we discussed. And you lasered in on that and go, where do we disagree on that? Because it's a huge blind spot. No. Just because. <laughs> oh, there's a, a funny, like, Mr. Show sketch. I never watched that show. Check, I, check, I, check. I went and saw David Cross in Burlington, and uh, a bunch of people walked out okay. at one point. Yeah, he was, uh, he did this bit about Shit. gun control. He pissed off a bunch of people. It was, he was like, he's like, he's like, they're like leaving. And he's just in like Vermont. People are pissed off about gun shit. Yeah, are oh, there gun bet, people dude. up there? There's some. I mean, yeah, Burlington is like a little liberal bubble. But mm -hmm. somebody actually just told me that the largest active, uh, like the largest active chapter of the KKK is in Vermont. Wow, which I, didn't I know bet, that. dude. I could see that. I could see that being. A There's thing. a lot of you know. A lot what of was the tons was, of small towns? What was yeah. the joke? Um. It was gnarly. It was like he was talking about um he was talking about he was describing like a senator who was like uh super against gun control. Mm -hmm. And he's like what if like w like he basically described this really vivid scene of like someone going into his daughter's school and like shooting her. Jeez. Mm -hmm. And it was like and she's like and he shoots her in the stomach and like his her guts are spilling out and there's like feces and blood and he's like holding his little girl and um it was kind of a shaggy dog joke you know it was like this long like fucked up really vivid uh -huh. depiction of like a really violent crime and then at the end he just he's like yeah what do you think about gun control now you know like some like Weird little punchline at the so end. So it was pretty much it was pretty much a pro gun control joke then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like so. Who was pissed off about it? Just people with guns, I guess. That people with guns were pissed off about that. Yeah, yeah. Like they, I guess so. I feel like it'd be the people. I feel like everybody would be kind of pissed off about that. <laughs> yeah, it was not. <laughs> well, he was making the case for gun control. That that's what the joke was doing. And well, exactly. So, that's what I was saying. It was a pro gun control joke. So I figured yeah. maybe the people who were against gun control. Gun, yeah, you're right. Yeah, people, people with guns. True. True. Tend true. to be. It was a very. It was like. It was like over the top, <laughs> kind of like pro gun control. It was like. <laughs> yeah, Jesus it was gnarly. It was such, such a vivid depiction. Like I got. I was uncomfortable because of how visceral the description was. And this happened in Burlington. Yeah, it was at higher ground. Damn, Burlington. And but he was like, but they. These people left, and I didn't notice it. I was like sitting just a couple rows back from the front. But he was like, he was like, all right. He just said something like, all right, we got some people leaving. He's like, that's this is usually about when. Oh, people walk. He's out? like, usually yeah. if anyone's gonna leave, this is right when they do it. So good night, everybody. Like, he does it every night. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's pretty standard for yeah, him. He's built up that description. Yeah. <laughs> then he fucking pisses his pants, dude. and then <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> his closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that ties with gun control, but Duncan. Are we? Uh, are we rolling? Yeah, we. I mean, we're recording, Ooh, dude. Live from the studio. Oh, you guys are on ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, dude. sorry, baby. Yes, we are. <laughs> um, Merrick Glazer. I'm Jimmy Seleski. <laughs> oh, tonight on the the cast we got a special guest, uh, a fan favorite. We got Richard Bowen back on the cast. What's up, baby Richard cakes? Bowen. And Jordan yeah. Levine for the Jordan first Levine. time on the mic, dude. Last time you were here, you were uh, you're just chilling. It was with Ian and Colin, wasn't it? It was Richard and Colin. no, he oh was, Richard and yeah. Colin. Oh yeah, I remember that night. Yeah, dude, and you were we you came were in, in that same spot, but without a mic, and I was like, right. damn, very true. So now we made it work. Did some chiming in. Why are you down here right now, by the way? Um, I'm on tour, baby. Oh, are you yeah. really? Yep. You're doing. Uh, you're headlining the Out of Bar show last night, right? I guess. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. It was, was fun. That? It was cool. It was. Uh, I didn't even know that uh, Michael Moran was a musician. I've been fucking up. I've been <laughs> switching magician and musician. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I've done it like four <laughs> times recently. <laughs> and I, I I hosted a uh I hosted a show an open mic in Philly and I accidentally said your next performer is a magician. <laughs> Which is, you know, Which is, yeah, they're expecting something way different. <laughs> yeah. But uh but yeah, Mike Mike Moran is a bass a talented bass player. Yeah. And no, a, I got to hit him up, dude. He's vocal, right? Thank Doesn't he, he do so. some He vocals? did some vocals, yeah, oh, and yeah. he played with t- I think it was two yeah, it was two bands like one was they played a bunch of covers of like a bunch of different bands and then the other one he's in like a Metallica uh short-haired Metallica doesn't suck or something is what it's called. <laughs> and uh so they play only Metallica from when the band had short hair. I I don't know anything about Metallica. Yeah. Most of the uh I don't know, I missed a lot of that kind of music. My yeah. brother was super into like all that like hardcore rock stuff. Uh-huh. Or I guess you just call it rock or I don't know. Metal, yeah, I yeah think. metal, metal, yeah, metal, yeah. That's harder than rock. Yeah, um. definitely metals, metals. <laughs> Whoa, dude, I've never thought of that. <laughs> I guess it depends on the metal, metal and the rock. And the rock, <laughs> true, that's true, dude. What is gold? <laughs> it's very malleable. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you think Dwayne Johnson likes metal? <laughs> <laughs> probably not. He probably doesn't, dude. dude Dwayne somebody Johnson come hates out? Lexington Steel, dude. <laughs> Does he really? The famous oh, no. <laughs> <dude. laughs> <laughs> you know what Dwayne Johnson drinks when he's on ecstasy? <laughs> Rolling Rock. <laughs> <laughs> dude. <that's laughs> <laughs> that's funnier than they gave you credit for. I'm gonna say that. That's funnier. The Rolling Rock's a good beer. <laughs> I don't understand why he doesn't like it. <laughs> Are you so like you got like a? Do you have like a whole like uh, East Coast thing going or? Um. So, I think it's like nine cities. And uh, how long you been out? Well, okay, I built a skate park in, or, you know, I helped build a skate park in Nashua, New Hampshire. Very, very sick park. Best nice. best transition park in New England. If you skate and you live in New England, definitely go skate in Nashua. It's awesome. Um, I finished that project. Oh, man, when was that? It was... Uh, is that what you do for a living? Just like way? three you weeks build? ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I've been. That's how I ended up in Baltimore the last time. Yeah, I know that because you yeah. had to build that thing in Hamden, right? Yeah, that was my second oh, job. Um, but that's like that was like it? my first full job that I did with that company. I I worked for like three weeks on the Burlington Vermont Park, which is where I met those guys, and how I got the job. And then I worked for a month on a park in. Uh, did you start out in just like general construction? Did you like? Um, not really. I, so I did a bunch of, uh, I mean, I always played with Legos and shit when I was a kid. And then I, uh, took a bunch of welding classes in high school and I sort of like, I did like the welding tech program, my, my junior year of high school. Cool. And so I did it like three periods a day. And then I had been into skating for a while and I would go to this indoor skate park in Burlington called Talent. And I, I, knew that the owner built parks around Vermont. And so I just went, I just went up to him one night and I was like, Hey, like I know how to weld. I like, I'd love to help you. I'd love to like work with you if you, if you ever need a hand building parks. And so he hired me on like the next job. So I did that. I built wooden parks in Vermont for like 10 years, like my whole twenties basically. And then right sort of at the end of that, like right before I started doing comedy, I did two concrete projects in Vermont with a couple different people and then um and then I did comedy for a year in Burlington and then they built the Burlington Park and Who so pays I, for that by the way is that the city that pays for that or is it's it? it's usually a, yeah a combination of like state and federal recreation funding nice and and so yeah but uh but yeah I did that um, I worked, I've worked with Artisan since last June and, uh, I've just saved money. I'll, I've saved a bunch of money the whole time and now I'm like taking off. I was going to say, how long are you, how long is your tour like scheduled for? Um, 
This one, I'll be on the road until the end of October. This isn't I'm your nice. first one, though? No. Well, since... Yeah, since the last time I was here, I've been to like 27 cities or something like that. Like, I've gone. Because yeah, you went th- to go build a skate park in like Arizona or something, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and then th- you just like drove up the whole West Coast, or like you just kind of made your way up the West well, Coast. Well, no, or... I just, because my, my truck died mm-hmm. when I, before I left here last. Yeah, yeah. So I actually had to leave it here, and that was like a whole, that was a pain in the ass because it didn't, <laughs> didn't have a title. Oh, shit. <laughs> and so it was like, I had to jump through all these hoops to get, just to donate the fucking thing. But, uh, but yeah, like, so when I first got that job, the skate park job, like on my way to my first gig with them in North Carolina, I stopped in like, I stopped in like New York and Philly and Boston. Mm -hmm. And that was like sort of my first like little tour. Like I didn't even have anything booked, but I, I would just like, just go to Mike's and stuff. And then I stopped again on my way home after that job in the same cities and then on my way to baltimore i did the same thing but i went for longer like i stayed in philly for i stayed in new york for a week and philly for a week i think i stayed in boston for a week so i just kept like i would just go and like make connections and stuff are you on tour now you're not on tour now because of a gig though because because last time you said you went out to a gig and you drove back uh, and like toured along the way back, or were you? Was well, that like the goal. So I went. So I went to a bunch of cities on the way to North Carolina, and then I went to all the same ones on the way home, and then I went to a bunch of cities on the way here to Baltimore, and then I hit a couple things on the way back home, and then I had to go to Scottsdale, Arizona, from Vermont. So I went to, let's see, I went to Boston, Pittsburgh, Nashville. New Orleans, Houston, and then Phoenix. And then I worked in Phoenix for two months. Uh, I worked in Phoenix February and March. And then I went from Phoenix to... Um, Are you just, like, calling these people up? Like, just, like... I don't know. I just kind of show up and, like, I know either through skate park construction or skating or comedy, I basically am... I either know someone personally or I have like uh, a friend of a friend, friend, of a friend in yeah. like any major city in, in America. That's so it's just kind of, you just put yourself out there and shit will work out kind of, you know? And I mean, I've, I've like, I've slept in some like weird, I've slept in some U-Hauls and yeah. some, uh, <laughs> I got, okay. Yeah. I got a cool story yeah, about yeah, that yeah. later. But so I went, I worked in Scottsdale for two months, did, you know, I did a bunch as much stand up as I could in the in the Phoenix area, which is hard without a car because it's, it's super spread out. But I met I met a bunch of cool people, and then I went to San Diego, L.A., Vegas, Denver, uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Albany, back to Burlington, and then. I worked in Boston for, uh, yeah, so that was like May that, you know, I worked, Scott, you know, Arizona, February, March, toured for seven weeks, was in Vermont in May, and then, yeah, in June, so June, July, August, I worked on the Nashua, New Hampshire Park, and I did as much stand-up as I could in Nashua, uh, Haverhill, Mass., Boston. I also went to Providence, Rhode Island, for the first time. Nice. Um, I went to. And this is all. This is. But the, the you're saying this is all because of the the skateboard company. Yeah, kind of like I, I would just I'd work during the week, and then every weekend I would either go to Boston, or like another like what wherever I could get to on the bus, basically. Yeah. I went to Maine for a couple weekends. My my. Uh, Oh, you're saying My, you? I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking. Were you in these cities because of that company? No, no, just you like you just went to those cities. Yeah. So on my way to, I had to work in Scottsdale. Uh huh. So I just went to his instead of just flying straight to Scottsdale, I just with bus tickets and his hitchhiking and rides from friends, I went to as many cities as I could on the way there, and then I did the same thing to get home, to go from Scottsdale to the Nashua project again, instead of just like flying straight there and fucking twiddling my thumbs or whatever, 
I just like traveling, so I'll just I just go and then. So on both of those tours, like I basically didn't have. I had one thing booked in L.A. I got to open for uh, my friends, the Warble. They're at, like a skate crew, and they nice. um, they they've been getting coverage on Thrasher magazine oh, for. Cool. I also heard you on a while uh, now. Kill Tony out there. Too. Yeah, so I got to do. So yeah, in L.A., I got to open uh, for my friends skate video the warble for their full length video called new driveway which is super fun if you like when you say you like skate, skate video, video. I mean, it's like a it's like a music and then like them just fucking ripping tricks on well that actually f- that's cool too uh yeah it's a full length skate video and the entire score was done by their friends uh their friends band cobra man which are two people that I think they know through school or something like that. But it yeah, it's so cool. It's like a their friends band did all the music. Fuck yeah. Wow. So I did stand up. It was at this venue called the Hi Hat. I think oh man. That's I can't a cool remember. name for a club though, the Hi Hat. I do like that. I think that's wrong. Oh damn. What the hell is it called? They should change it. I don't know. I could look it up. But I did stand up at the beginning. Then they showed the video, and then Cobra Man played a whole set, oh, and no. it was awesome. It was yeah. so fun. And then they have their friend Bert does this like man ramp character, like he he like holds a piece of plywood and people skate on it. <laughs> oh shit! And they do all this crazy shit with it. Like he was there, like all dressed up, and Fuck yeah. they were they had the piece of plywood, so the crowd would like hold the plywood up, and then like <laughs> he's like crowd serving on that. And then this kid Ducky, Why? this kid Ducky, who's like a skater that's blown up, kind of he. He fucking gets up with a skateboard, and I got so scared because then he stood on it, and I was like, "No!" And then he <laughs> no. was like, "I could tell he's gonna try a kickflip," and I felt like it, like a mom or something. I was like, Jeez. "I was like, no, this isn't a good idea." <laughs> and then he just fucking did it, Damn. perfect kickflip on on like ten on people plywood, holding up people a piece of plywood. Fully like lands it. He kick flipped a crowd. Uh, he did, <laughs> dude. It was one of the coolest things I've ever That's seen. So fucking lit. It was yo. awesome. So yeah, that's insane. That is fucking insane. It was nuts. Is you can see it on, I don't know. There's video of it somewhere. Damn, that's so cool. Where are you going to next? And then uh, next, I'm going to DC. Yeah, so I'm going down the East Coast tour. Nice. Um, you going all the way down to Florida? Uh, I'm going to New Orleans. Ooh, that's oh, right. So you'd like going? So I'm going. I'm going to. What are all the cities, by the way? Uh, okay, so, so so I finished Nashua. Skate park, and then I went to Portland, Maine. I went to Portland, Maine's pretty cool. Portland, Maine is beautiful, yeah. yeah, yeah and right there's there. some cool comedy going on there. There's a room there called uh, La- called Lincoln's, and it's like a speakeasy. Like it's cash only, and everything is five bucks, oh, even shit. the t-shirts. <laughs> wow. And uh, it's they don't advertise at all, and there's no sign either. And there's a fucking secret door to get in it. It's Whoa. so dope. And it's a fantastic comedy show, like one of the most like electric rooms I've ever. I've That's gone to two sick. shows there, and they both were so good. And uh, it's a secret entrance. It's what's so this dope. place yeah. called? I don't want to uh, give away the secret. Lincoln's. Lincoln's. It's Lincoln's called Lincoln's. Too. Just go to Portland, Maine, and ask someone. <laughs> and, if they, and if they like you, they'll tell you where it is. And so yeah, I went to Lincoln. I went there. I wasn't even on the show, but I just I met this kid, uh, Colby Bradshaw. Who Sounds is good. one of my current like favorite comics? I met him nice. at a show in New Hampshire. I feel like I've heard that name before. I don't know why. Dude, it's fucked up. He's only say, been, it sounds like a good name, and I was like, I feel like I heard uh, that before. He's only been doing stand up like two years, and he's, he's got a so good name. fucking good. Yeah. And his oh, his voice is so soothing and <laughs> guided meditation. Dude, yeah, for real. He should do. He should do ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of went. I just went and hung out. I. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I was hoping for a guest spot. Yeah, didn't get it, but that's okay. That's cool. It's you know, it's nice to watch. Um, it's nice to watch good shows that you're not on because then you can like actually enjoy in, yourself yeah. and yeah. like listen and not freak yeah, out yeah. about mm-hmm. what you think. Yeah, you're not like second guessing. Like, all right, what should I do? Should I? Do? Oh fuck, he's did. Yeah, like that kind of joke. Now I can't do that kind of joke or whatever. Like, yeah, oh, fuck. jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that. there were also there that. were some Boston comics on the show too that I'm friends with. Uh, my friend Brett or Brent, fuck. I hope he doesn't hear this. <laughs> he doesn't even know my name. He probably won't. 
And uh, yours friend, though. He'll understand. <laughs> yeah, we're homies. Um, and this other lady, Ellen. I gotta look their names up now because the generous. I've only I've met Brett. I've met Brett a couple times, and uh, yeah, they run a really good show in uh in boston this is weird <laughs> brett yeah brett johnson and then let me look up i think it's ellen sugarman and they That's both they both crushed everybody fucking crushed on that show that night it was so good yeah ellen sugarman they're funny nice. boston comics look them up uh so you're going to dc and then like because you're getting to new orleans but like where's the yeah so i went okay so i went to portland then i went to Oh, and I met a really cool band called uh, Wildlife with Y's instead of I's. Ooh. And they let me do some jokes at a cool. set they did oh, yeah. at an outdoor pizza place. And then, nice. <laughs> then I went to Burlington for two days and hosted the prelims of Vermont's Funniest Comedian. And that was nice. really fun. I, got I to saw see you headlined friends. there recently, too. How was that? That was good. Yeah, th- so that was like at the it end. It was like the 100 jokes or... Yeah, they... Uh, that was at the end of that uh, Scottsdale to Vermont tour. Okay, cool. Um, they have uh, they had a weekend with Lori Kilmartin. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a really good stand up, and she writes for Conan. And uh, but she normally they'll have a headliner do Thursday through Saturday, but Lori could not make it for Thursday. So the uh, Nathan and Natalie who own the Vermont club, they hit me up and they were like, Oh, like we're going to challenge you and see if you can tell a hundred jokes in a half hour. So, so I did that and that was, and I did it. I was successful. Nice. Of course they had like three people in headshot on the wall for it. Uh, no, nah, not dope. You that should, would be dope. You should, you should lobby be, for yeah, it. That would be true. <laughs> you should, you like, should I get a headshot get like or something for this? Maybe I'll just put one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would do something like that. That'd be a thick move to take it down at that point. Like, yeah. You know, went through all that effort. And just every time I go home, I'll put it back. <laughs> how I'll many, update it. How many, how many jokes were in each one of the... First of all, when you were at McGooby's, you handed out these pamphlets. I don't know if you do that everywhere you go. Oh, yeah. Rich jokes. Yeah. yeah. How many jokes are in that? Um, I think... I don't know. I think it's usually like 30 to 40. And are those all handwritten? I mean, y- yeah, I I make an original and then I photocopy it. Cool. But but yeah, I handwrite the whole thing. I'm this I'm on issue 11 and uh I'm making it on a typewriter for the Ooh. first time. And that's it's really fun. Fancy. That's dope. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm but I think once uh I'm working on number 11 and then once number twelve is done, I think I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna switch the format. I think I'm gonna double the size, and I'm gonna start to include, uh, I'm gonna start to do interviews and like, give other comics like a full page nice. or maybe a spread or something, so they yeah, can yeah, like, yeah. I could like interview them and then they could do like a longer Put, like, pictures in there, too written piece. Stuff? Yeah, yeah, start to maybe start to do every issue in color and. Ooh. That would be sick. I don't really know. I but I just want to keep like, I, I just uh, yeah. There's a lot of cool like zine culture is really cool and uh, comedy, like comedy is fucking popping in America and yeah. it's it just be neat to like have a cool little publication. I'm gonna sound like an asshole right now, but is zine culture like magazine culture? Is that well, a, a zine is a like self is a self published magazine. magazine, and they're normally. Don't. Uh, the vast I didn't majority. Know that was right now. I had no clue. Yeah, I mean, I, I th- it was like a big thing in punk culture, in like the '80s and, and skate culture and stuff. I mean, I'm sure it's kind of always been a thing, but that's where I kind of learned. My friend Adam Cook had a zine called Rusty Kitchen, <laughs> and he let me borrow all the issues. It was like a skate zine, <laughs> and that was kind of my. Zine, I had been thinking dude. about it for a while, and then he gave me a bunch of zines that he had made when he when. Is that just Z I N E S? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I thought it was like an X E type of thing because that'd be kind of cool too. Well, you could do that. A zine. True. X E N E. That'd be cool. Whoa. That culture would be popping. Maybe. Yeah. That'd be Maybe like that'll be your zine, dude. Extra. <laughs> zine. Extra punk. <laughs> extra punk. Up the punks. <laughs> so you went to Burlington, and then. Uh, yeah, went to Burlington, hosted the. Prelims of that contest got to see 
some old friends, got to see some new Burlington comics. Nice. Got to see, there's always a bunch of like wing nuts that come out of the woodwork <laughs> that have like never done stand up. And they, but they, it's like, oh, the big contest is going down. Yeah. And they're, I think this I'm going to do gonna it. Make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sick. Like this you get to see chance. some, you get to see some weird shit. Hell Are yeah. you like, because cause you were here for, how long were you here last time you were here? I was here like three and a half months, I think. And you like really like, you kind of like put yourself in the scene pretty quickly. Like it was impressive. Like by the end of it, you did that uh, Magoobies thing. You came in like, what was it, fourth place or something like that for that? Oh, well, I guess I I guess I did place in that, yeah. Yeah, it I, was I think Ian, uh, maybe Colin. You got to the finals at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was fun. Are I you, mean, yeah, I just, I was. Uh, is that like, are you like that immersed in the comedy scenes in, like, on a scale of like other cities, like for instance, Boston or Portland or anything like that? Are you like as immersed in those scenes as well, or is Baltimore like a kind of like a second home? In um, a way? well, Baltimore, that was my, like, I lived, uh, I was living like a mile. Like, all of Baltimore. I, I was living in Baltimore, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and Baltimore's a small city, so every night after work, I could bike to something. And I had a truck, too, most yeah, of the time yeah. I was here. So I had a vehicle, so I would still get up, like, five to seven nights a week. And I was performing on the street and stuff. Wow. But then it was hard. Like, I couldn't, like, I was definitely, like, blowing it at work a little bit. Because I'd be up late, and then it's, like, construction, and you're up early. and Yeah, you got to get up mad early for that shit. Yeah, and, like, I got... My boss called me out toward the end, and he was just like, yo, like, what's going on? Like, you're not really, like, kind of not pulling your weight, you know? So, like... Damn. Then in, So, in Scottsdale and Nashua, I tried a lot more to, like, balance the two. And I was kind of killing myself, too. You know, it's fucking... Yeah, it's like burning the candle at both ends. Yeah. Cool and I and I tried to like focus. I started building a joke database when I was here, and so I tried to just like focus on that, like, cause I'm like you know I'm pretty hard on myself. Like if I wasn't going out every night, when you're yeah, I, like I always want to go out. Uh -huh. And in Arizona, yeah. I could have gone out every night, but it just would have been insane. Like the public transit was shitty and stuff. So I would just I would work on that joke database and, um. In uh, what do you mean by a joke database? Um, so yeah, like so the vast majority of my jokes are sh like one or, one or two liners, mm -hmm. and I have way too many of them, and it's a data management nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was I I entered all of my notebooks. I enter all of my notebooks verbatim into my computer i save them as a pdf then i go through and i cut out all the crap like uh i write a fair amount of positive affirmations oh. <laughs> <laughs> like just like i'll just be like don't quit buddy don't ever stop like shit like that like if i feel like if i feel hyped you know yeah, yeah. sometimes it just i just love right like the feeling of writing is so good so sometimes if i'm like pumped i'll just write like I love Dude, this so much same, or whatever. I do yeah. the same shit. <laughs> yeah, so any but anything that's not a joke or anything that's not worth working on, I pull out and then I have this kind of like juicier text file. Okay. Then I put all of that into a spreadsheet. Then I do another edit of that of like okay, like uh, I really don't need to save this one, you yeah, know. Yeah. And then so I whittled it down uh I whittled it down from like 15,000 entries. Oh my God. Jeez. To like, uh, I whittled it down to a little over two thousand. Damn, that's uh, a lot of don't quit buddies, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, yeah. No. Well, there's ninety percent of what I wrote. So <laughs> many <laughs> shitty jokes. Never give up. Or just dumb stuff like uh, uh, whatever. Like right here, it says Sue, Sue, the owner, <laughs> lawyer, <laughs> like. <laughs> like I won't that won't that won't be making it. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> like this just says a white supremacist. <laughs> and I think I was thinking about like a like a you know how there's like white pizzas? <laughs> <laughs> so like a white like someone who only eats a, 
a white supreme pizza <laughs> than like a white supremacist. <laughs> that one's not gonna make the cut. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That one's getting it's not dropped. Going in Excel, that one's getting dude. dropped. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. So now I have this. You know. Were you always like writing notes, and then like you just recently started putting them in a computer, or like how long were you doing comedy before you even decided to start writing shit down? Um, when I started the database project, I had like 35 notebooks. And they're they're all just li- written shit. Like, yeah, yeah, they're all little, yeah. you know. So, um, and now I have this is like I think this is actually number fifty, Ooh, and wow. so yeah. Um, so now I now I'm up to date. Like now, usually like as soon as I finish a notebook, within like a week, I'll take the time. It takes about two hours to wow. input everything. Yeah. That's crazy. And then and so now I have this list of. It's just over, it's like 1,100 entries of jokes that I think are worth telling. Dude, that's efficient as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it dude, really it's, is, dude. That's sick. It's crazy. Dude, it's cool. at any it's moment in time, you're like, ah, fuck, what do I, what do, I do? And you're like, uh, let me go to the at the club section. Yeah, Jesus. Well, see that, dude, oh, if it's still. they're playing rap music, I'll do this. If this <laughs> see, that's it. See, now, now, like, they're all in there, and I. I whittled it down to that many. Then I edited them all to have like uh, correct grammar and punctuation and all that stuff. Now I'm in the process of creating categories and creating like, and that in itself is like, it drives me nuts. Like I'm <laughs> such a, I'm like a total like perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's uh, like labeling like your music and iTunes. Like yeah, back yeah. Back in the day, like yeah. wouldn't do it automatically, and you'd have to like Chill. scan a fucking CD and be like, all right, what is this? Um, yeah, you're like, is this folk or is it yeah. folk rock? <laughs> yeah, you gotta like Google the genre, <laughs> so categorize your own yeah, fucking like, iPod. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like this is folk, but I get way too pumped. Like <laughs> this is folk, folk rock. pump. <laughs> I remember when I was using LimeWire, oh, I would dude. get like, don't worry, be happy, Bob Marley. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, LimeWire. That's deep. <laughs> get one song at a time. Yeah, dude. That was Take crazy. like 10 minutes to download one song. You remember Kazaa? <laughs> no. Remember, dude, Kazaa was another Kazaa, one. Kazaa, dude. It was LimeWire, Kazaa. Bear Share. Bear Share. Dude, we were trying to come up with that Bear the other Share, night. We were I talking never heard about, of that one. Like, dude. Dude, I used to. Dude, this is true. I used to get on fucking Napster so oh, much yeah. and download classic rock songs that my friends started calling me Kenny Loggins. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that one. That one is in the like, database yeah, though. I was like, damn, your friends. <laughs> that one's in the top <laughs> eleven hundred. Like, damn, your friends are a lot like you, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> 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 well, your your friends all have that shitty sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your friends are all fucking start, start all dads. dads. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's great. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. I, okay. okay. I was gonna I was gonna ask you something. You would. I would ask you something, dude. <laughs> I'm the only one asking the fucking questions right now. <laughs> Come to find. Oh, wait. Okay. L- let me finish. Okay. I went to Burlington. Then I went to... Okay. Portland, Burlington. Then I got to go uh, to the Otis Mountain Get Down. Oh, what's that? Which is a music festival in upstate New York. Um, and my friend Evan uh, booked me, basically... To, to oh, hold on, okay. <laughs> hold your horses. Be the bathroom attendant. <laughs> Dude, he booked me to to use my portable amp to entertain the line oh to God. get in. Because <laughs> last year the Wi-Fi went down and they couldn't oh they couldn't God. let people in and people and the, just didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, people were getting pissed Are we in the line. To talk to people. <laughs> yeah, to talk to the people next to us. <laughs> yeah, you got a bunch They're of breathing on. Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I just stole one of my my beers <laughs> yeah, it's like a bunch of it's like a bunch of a bunch of hippies that are trying to fucking party and they just gotta <laughs> stand there with man. all their coolers and shit <laughs> so did you talk to the whole the whole line at the same time uh you so what i did, did was individual crowd the, work for <laughs> they had the, yeah dude okay so 
Uh, there was like you didn't um, need the speaker. they had a <laughs> this walk up in there. You're right. <laughs> start frying them. <laughs> it's just small talk with him. Right, gather around. <laughs> By the way, let me get a beer. So yeah, yeah. I had this badge on that said Gopher, and uh, got the you know Big X coffee every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, folks. Uh, they had a um. They had a huge, like a big parking area, like a big field, mm. and they had it all like roped off and shit. It was very, I've only been to two music festivals, but it was very well run. Like, they, my dude. friend Evan helps run it, and it was like, he needs to get a better router, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> there were no Wi Fi problems, there were no <laughs> admittance <laughs> problems this year. Yeah. But, uh, so they have this huge parking area, and then the, actual entrance like the gate to the festival or whatever was like uh, maybe a quarter mile up the street so they had a shuttle to bring people back and forth just like a big flatbed truck and uh so i tried to ride the truck (laughs) because it was perfect like you uh on the truck like it was like a perfect crowd you know they're like assembled like a crowd would be yeah it's but like the, a boat it's like a boat <laughs> yeah yeah and i just hung out by the cab Hell yeah. but my amp was like just a little bit uh it wasn't quite loud enough mm-hmm. uh-huh. and i actually t- i was like dude next year we got to get like an amp a powered amp on the fucking <laughs> on the thing i'm saving up for why because then it's got a fucking like because then it's cord to plug in dude and yeah speakers, dude that would have been sick yeah that would be sick and it, it would be so sick because if you went you could literally do like a hundred sets in a night for a hundred different crowds completely wow. different crowds and they can't fucking go anywhere they can't get up to order a drink. <laughs> it's not like they're going to... No I, I guess if you're that bad, they'll jump off the truck, which in my case <laughs> yeah. might happen. Oh, my God. You know what I bet you'd be really good at? What's that? <laughs> Being like a tour bus guy. <laughs> yeah, dude. I would love to do that. I thought about doing rickshaw tours of Burlington. Dude. <laughs> Jesus if you, Christ. If you're heading down to New Orleans, uh-huh. you should fucking be a rickshaw dude for the couple days you're down there. <laughs> It's like where? New I'm actually, I'm gonna, dude, there are rickshaws like down there. There's a yeah. there's a it's comic that Orleans? came up to do um super comedy when that used to be at the Yellow Sign Theater and she was like a rickshaw girl. Yeah. And like a comic on like that was her side job, just running around people in rickshaws. Nice. It's crazy. She had yeah, huge it seems thighs. <laughs> I bet, dude. Yeah. Thunder, <laughs> thunder thighs. You're talking about how you like manual labor early in the morning, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, I love riding a bike, man. It, I, Rickshaw's it is kind so of riding fun. a bike. Are you supposed to talk Except to Except you are like, the yeah. bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your legs are the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a Oh, no, no. Oh, you're talking about like an actual... <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. I'm talking about an actual Like a rickshaw, wheelbarrow dude. for people. Oh, you're talking about like doing the bike thing? <laughs> that is it. Yeah, no, I'm, ta- I'm talking about okay. a bike you rickshaw. You do the bike thing. Oh, I didn't <laughs> know. That would be ridiculous, I didn't dude. know a bike could still be called a rickshaw. Yeah, we could just walk, but... We each could walk, but we could hire one guy to walk... For us, oh yeah, dude, they have that. Like, if you go up to New York City, you'll see dude, a rickshaw. No open container. It's probably super in expensive Orleans. with People somebody walking. <laughs> with somebody walking, I've seen it in. I've seen it in my life, and I've only been to so many cities, That's and they've crazy. been in America. <laughs> just get a bike, <laughs> dude. No, Save up I'll your tell tips. You, I think I. What city were you referring to earlier? New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. I've seen it in New Orleans. Don't go down there. I've seen New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans is a dope city. It's so cool, dude. It's like another world. <laughs> Who was in there. here that was trying to, Oh, Mahedi was trying to, He was like, it's so fucking dirty, blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude. Hey, have you been to fucking Baltimore? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's a small city, too. Its population is like one-fourth or one-fifth of yeah. ours. It's crazy. Oh, it's the... Uh, Baltimore is the 29th most populous city in America. It's only because it's so no. big. It's so big area-wise. It entails so much of, like, land. Yeah. I don't know. It's I don't. I don't know anything about the size, really. I do know. Did you know that uh, Baltimore was actually founded forty-seven years prior to San Francisco? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? So I guess that makes it the old Bay Area. <laughs> 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 
Dude, have you done that in I Baltimore yet? yet? No. no, but I'll no, do it tomorrow. That, 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 would be a, that would make you <laughs> famous, dude. You'll yeah, be famous. would be sick if my ex-girlfriend lived here. <laughs> it's going to be my old Bay Area. <laughs> 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 Just keep triple, with triple up them modern tundras. <laughs> <laughs> Cassandra's on tundras.com. <laughs> oh, I got a new website, you guys. Okay. Yeah, it's called www.asemicolon. It's basically just a dot comma. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we should get a we should get a drummer in here to do rim shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna hire a drummer someday. I want to edit in <laughs> rim shots. <laughs> Dude, you got that sample board. You gotta fucking I know, I gotta start. Ring, yeah. I'm not using it for actual musical shit, so I might as well use it for fucking rim shots and. Boop, 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 boop. That kind of shit. That'd be cool to have. Yeah, dude. That'd I'm be dope. to get though. those, like, uh. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, <Damn>, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get that shit. That would be dope. Richard, do you remember? You mentioned that you had played in a jail, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> you never yeah. Exclusive that story. That was before here. Yeah, I've done. Te- well, technically, I've done three prison shows. Wow. Uh, wow. Two. Pr- I've performed in two Vermont state prisons. Okay. Nice. Um, and yeah, those guys. Those were those guys were rowdy. You know. I was like, geez, I can't take you guys anywhere. (laughs) 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 I'm fucking up all my jokes. I actually have a friend. I actually have a friend uh, who just got sentenced to a year in jail. Yeah. So you got to hook up there? Uh, Well, no, actually, I got the shows. (laughs) Yo, I go to this man on the inside. I'll talk to the warden. (laughs) No, no, I I know this lady. I know this lady uh, that's actually a perimeter guard. Yeah, her name's Barb Dwyer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, my friend just got sentenced to a year in prison, but he gets really bad stress acne, so as soon as he got in, he broke out. <laughs> 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 it's funny, because, like, you're telling a real story right now? <laughs> no, I'm not. No. This is all made I up? I mean, I did, no, no, I did, I did, <laughs> I did three prison shows. It was awesome. It was <laughs> so good, dude. Probably the first one was like m- maybe the best set I've ever had. It really? was amazing. That's sick. Yeah. Those it was so there, cool yeah. too. Like they were so thankful. Like we all hung out. I did it with um both times I did it with three other Vermont comics and we all hung out and just like kind of like said goodnight to everybody yeah. and like every single dude w- like Gave us like they were like thank you so much for coming here (laughs) and it's uh, dude I really I want to do I wanted my dream is to do a prison in every state like the prison tour that would be a cool concept yeah if you if anybody here is in listening is in prison (laughs) or knows someone that is talk to a guard yeah if anybody knows any more Barb Dwyer's (laughs) dude okay so let me let me bring this back around. Bring to it. the hey, damn U-Haul story. I want to hear this oh, shit. Okay, yeah, this is fucking awesome. This is one of my <laughs> this is one of my favorite things Whoa. I've ever done. Fuck yes. Okay, everything about this is awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's a good way to open a story. Great way to open a story. So Set your expectations high. I prior to building the National Park, I had spent about maybe two to three weeks in Boston over over several trips. And uh, there's a, a comic in Boston. Her name's Allie Dick, who actually, uh, that's how I got the, the room I rented in Baltimore is her friend Margaret that she used to do roller derby with. Nice. So anyways, so uh, I hit up Allie. I told her I was moving to Boston or to the Boston area to work on that park. And so my first weekend, she's like, hey, there's this thing they're going to do. There's going to be a comedy show in a box truck, and you should go. She like kind of she hit me to it, you know. And so I found out about it. It's this thing called the Wandering Cricket Night Market, and they do it just a couple times a summer. And they organize this thing, and they don't tell anybody what the location is until a few hours before they start. They make like a Facebook group, and it's like invite only. And then... They post the location, 
and it was in like an industrial area in uh, Somerville, Massachusetts, which mm-hmm. is it's basically Boston. Like, it's like right across the river. Um, and so, a bunch of box trucks park on this street, and then every box truck is like an attraction. So, wow. one this woman had a bunch of typewriters, and you could like write. You had to write a letter to your parents, <laughs> and so like there's like letter, and then you like posted it on the wall. And then another one, which was so sketchy, it was just, it was a box truck with a fog machine and a strobe light. And it was just like, you just went in and like got bummed, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like it was so disorienting and <laughs> nauseous. Just fucking um, bummed out. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go here. But, then, but the sickest thing, this guy, Andy Ofish, who runs a bunch of shows uh, in Boston, he runs a shows at improv boston he runs a naked show which i got to do while i was there <laughs> you do stand up totally naked oh yeah dude how was um, that that was cool it was fun yeah it was audience wait you were completely too? naked yeah yeah all the comics are completely naked Damn. that's insane and the, that's wild. it was wild it was fucking wild <laughs> <laughs> but that's back crazy. to the wait back to wait, the truck story wait, wait, wait. you can't just say that no we'll get back to it. <laughs> okay. it's whatever you, fu- you you know you're naked okay, yeah, and yeah. you tell jokes and whatever <laughs> you know but you can't make like big dick jokes right yeah, because <laughs> everyone will know it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane, dude. It's pretty wild. It's kind of cool, though, because like 30 seconds in, it just felt like any other set. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like pretty cool. This is normal. This That's is normal. Pretty, that, I mean, I kind of fucking understand that completely. Yeah. 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 It was a very cool feeling. It was a was really illegal. like... Is that legal? Uh, it must have been. I mean, it's like... Yeah, it's like a... It's a very... Uh, established venue in boston i don't is know how it? long it's been there but now with i'm your sure comedy, there, i'm if, sh- um i'm sure there's some code or something like yeah. that i don't i was actually thinking about that before i was like is it if i were to just walk outside completely naked right now yeah if i were to just like tomorrow morning when i woke up just walked out my door just d- went about my day completely naked yeah is that illegal I don't know yeah, if the laws are here. Public indecency, right? That's crazy when in, you think about it. In Vermont, <laughs> that's crazy when you think about it. In like Vermont, the fact that they, well, it, uh, laws vary by state. In Vermont, you can legally be fully naked, but you have to leave your house naked. You can't disrobe in public. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good law. And you can't diddle. Law. You can't diddle yourself. You can't change your mind halfway through and be like, you know, I'm I bet you could today. get. I bet you could put clothes on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or I bet I bet you naked. could leave somebody else's house naked. They're not gonna be like, "Hey, is that your house?" <laughs> like, ah, I don't have a wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me see some ID. IDs, no. <laughs> That's like one of those laws. That <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. Okay, so back to the box truck. Okay, so so Andy Ofish. Uh, so he rented. A box truck, a budget. It was a budget truck, and he, it was like twenty folding chairs. I think like it could fit like twenty or twenty five people, mm-hmm. and then just a mic and a stand and a stool or whatever at the yeah. front, and like set it up. He had a spotlight and shit. It was so cool. And then a friend of his had a VW bus that they set up as a green room, and there were like snacks and shit. That's sick. And this lady did tear. I got my tarot cards read, and and so. He set it up as like a rotating open mic list, so you would do a five minute set. But as soon as you went up, you could put your name back on the list, and so you could just hang out all night and keep going up. And the oh, the crowd kept rotating. Yeah, yeah. And it was so fun, dude. It was so cool. Like, and um, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's the perfect space. It's a small space. That's like a good concept for like that type of environment, like a festival or like like. It was like a market or like a nighttime market yeah. or something or like just like a pop up gallery or whatever. Yeah. But I could see that working and similarly at like fucking I feel like that'd be a better format for Artscape or like any of those like comedy shows that happen during a festival because right. like you could just have comedy all day. Yeah, yeah. You could have people coming in and out all day. It, yeah, it was it like it was so cool. And it completely worked like the space i mean yeah small spaces are the best for comedy and uh it was fantastic i did like three sets and the sets were really fun the crowds were fun and it was like you know you got to hang out in this like cool bus with other comics and shit it was so fun so but 
to in order to do this, so I was living. Uh, I lived with a coworker in in Haverhill, Massachusetts, which is about an hour north of Boston, and I took the commuter rail there, and I took my bike on the bus, or on the on the train, and I knew, like, in order to catch my train home that night, I would have had to leave like immediately after my first set. Uh, but I just didn't want to, <laughs> and I Is didn't. Is that what they call it up there? By the way, the commuter rail. Yeah, that's like an official name for. The, they call it the light rail trains. down here. Yeah, but I guess it's the same thing. Well, there's like different. I mean, there's the T and then the commuter rail, but uh, but yeah, but I knew that I had missed my train, and so I was like, okay, like I'm either gonna like sleep on the street somewhere tonight, or I'm gonna like have to bug a comic or whatever, so. But I just let, you know, I let the thought go. I did some more sets. I talked to some people and shit. And then, so I'm hanging out at the end of the night. And it's just like Andy and the owners of the VW. And they're like packing up and everything. And I like helped him out a little bit or whatever. And then, uh, and come to find out, in the interim, I found out that there was actually construction on the line. And I couldn't get the train from Boston. I had to get it from uh, Malden Center, which is a little bit, it was like three or four miles north. And so I'm thinking, like, I'm like, all right, I got to, like, head to Malden or whatever. And then I hear Andy say, I overhear him say, okay, yeah, yeah like, I just got to drop this truck off in Malden, and then I'm going to go home. And I was like, oh. So I just was like, I was like, yo, uh, I was like, I'm actually, I'm actually staying with my friend in Malden tonight. You think I could just ride with you? And I, I could just, like, throw my bike in the back of the box truck? And he's like, sure. So... I ride with him. We go. He parks the truck at the budget rental place. Yeah. And then it was perfect. He's like, he's like, yo, will, will you wait with me for a little bit until my Uber gets here? And I'm like, dude, no problem. <laughs> so I hang out with him. <laughs> I hang I out with him. I on it. <laughs> until his Uber gets there. And then his Uber got there. And then I rode my bike to a CVS, a 24-hour CVS. And I bought a pillow and a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back and I slept in the budget truck. Dude, that's fucking. <laughs> and then in the morning I went back and I returned the pillow and blanket. And then I got <laughs> the train home. <laughs> and it, it was like that. I was I was cold all night, but I was so stoked <laughs> on what I was doing. <laughs> and that kept me warm. So <laughs> you sick. were just warm all the fucking hype. Just, you were like, I was dude, just, I'm fucking killing it right now. <laughs> dude, I was just I was just like laying there. Like fucking genius. <laughs> I'm just like laying there on the hard, cold floor, like stoked next to my bike in the dark in the back of a box truck. <laughs> Your fucking budget bike rental. is shivering. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh man, it was awesome. And then yeah, like I folded the blanket up perfectly so it fit back in the packaging. Dude, amazing. It was so dope. <laughs> and then I actually, so that's like a sweet trick, kids. If you're on the road and you need a place to stay. Go to any uh, rental, any U-Haul or budget rental truck. They don't lock the back of the box trucks. <laughs> so, uh, actually, when I was in Portland, um, <laughs> when I was in Portland, I was supposed to visit two friends, and both sets of plans fell through. <laughs> and Classic. So one night I slept in a sauna tube on the beach, which is like a con they're like these big cardboard construction tubes. That was what I slept in the first night, and then the second night I slept in a U-Haul. <laughs> yeah. The only sketchy thing is that if somebody knew, they could like latch it shut. Yeah, <laughs> which is pretty sketchy. That's scary as shit. <laughs> but or like, true. what if it? Because uh, I don't know. <laughs> or I, someone I, could rent it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or, like they're trying to fucking like show it to some dude early in the morning before he rents it. Like, yeah, look, there's no damages in the. There's wires. no homeless people in here. Oh wait, what the fuck? <laughs> That was one of our main specs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Okay, I got an I got another story. Okay, so I did that I did that music festival. Then I went to Montreal with my friend Nicole Sisk, nice. who's a super funny Burlington Vermont comic. And uh we did a show together and then I stayed up there with my friend May Barron, who's also she's a really funny improviser and uh she also uh, makes music and does a little bit of stand up too. Hung out with her, skated, did some other Montreal shows. Um, I met this kid, dude. This kid, Harrison Weinreb, is mm. fucking hilarious. <sighs> uh, look him up on Twitter. 
Um, then I went to Albany for a night. I skated with my friend Garrett, went to Albany for a night. Um, I, uh, I ended up puking in the back of a cop car. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it was unlocked. You know? <laughs> so I slept in a cop car that but, night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just they never working. locked those cars. <laughs> <laughs> and they always leave them running. Return the, the blanket. Fuck is up with that? <laughs> but, uh, but then I, I, I went to New York for a couple days. And uh, one night... I went to a uh, this place, 99 Cent Slices. It's right next to the Williamsburg Bridge. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got some slices, and uh, <laughs> I pretty much just <laughs> skated. I, I only rode... I was there for like four days, and I only rode the subway a couple times. I skated all over the place. And when I was skating, I would just wear swim trunks and like no shirt just because it was so hot. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there eating slices with no shirt on, and like these dirty swim trunks, like sitting on my skateboard, and these three kids on bikes come up. There's like they're probably like ten, and one of them hands me a peach, hey. and then he's like, "Here you go, man." And I was like, "Oh, thanks." And then, <laughs> and then bike kid number two goes, he's like, "We just gave you a peach. Now you got to give us a dollar." And then bike kid number three chimes in, and he goes, "Nah, man." He's homeless. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was going to say something, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Technically, I am. So that was pretty funny. And I got a free peach. There you go, <laughs> hey. Hey. Peaches, dude. It was kind of exactly. smashed. Yeah, I am shit. homeless. Like, damn, that kid called it. Technically, <laughs> sir. I can't kid, believe no. they tried to charge you a dollar for it. I know, dude. They should have given you a dollar, dude. <laughs> yeah, right? <You're> homeless. <laughs> like, nah, man, he's homeless. <laughs> Bike Kid 3 had values. <laughs> <laughs> Bike Kid 2 was a hustler. They have a very foiling character. They kind of. Yeah, dude. They were a other. troop. They were a troop, for sure. Yeah. They were a squad. It's a good group of friends. They all had different bikes too. <laughs> it was like it, you, you know, in Half Baked when they pull all their money to get bikes to <laughs> deliver the weed, <laughs> and like David Tell, fuck, sorry, David Tell. sorry, Dave, <laughs> sh- sorry, Dave Chappelle, <laughs> Dave Chattel. I always confuse those two. Yeah, they're very similar, <laughs> similar styles. Um, yeah, Dave Chappelle has, th- or should I, should I say Thurgood Jenkins? He's got the tandem bike. <laughs> and I think like Jim Brewer's character has like a girl's bike with like the banana seat or something. My memory's failing me. I but just keep thinking of Dave Attell doing Dave Chappelle bits now. <laughs> Does he? Oh, no, oh, oh yeah. That, yeah, I'm just he like should. <laughs> They're probably homies. They should be. Yeah. They're both very funny. Hell yeah. Happened. Both very funny boys. They yeah, they're still alive. Don't say that, Jordan. What Sorry. the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of uninformed about comedy. I don't, I don't really pay attention to the mainstream stuff. Dude, you're just an underground type of dude. Mm-hmm. Underground railroad all the way. <laughs> <laughs> underground. It's a subway, right? <laughs> Snail road. So did you ever ride the subway then when you were there? Uh, a couple times, yeah. Like if I was hanging out with somebody else and they were mm. they were riding it, did or, you uh, put on regular pants for the subway? Or it's still the swim no. Trunks? I kept my bike, my <laughs> okay, swim yeah. trunks, and I would put a shirt on. Hell yeah, I, I'm civil. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So okay, so New York. You probably went to Philly after that. Yeah, yeah. I was in New York. Uh, stayed with uh, my friend Anya Volts, who's very funny. Y'all should look her up. Uh, got it's to honestly see. amazing how many fucking people you know just in various different cities. It's well, that's like crazy, dude. It's sick. That's the whole point. I, I've been focused. I try not to be too concerned with like trying to get on a bunch of shows because I can just go to mics and then, a, a, especially at this point, like if I can, that's cool. If I can't, that's okay. But I just want to meet comics. Like, there's just like I said, yeah. it's just popping, and there's so many people that are into it, and I just know that. I'll meet people who I will create long-term friendships with. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I got to visit uh, Anya and uh, my other friend, Lori Goldman, who they have a, w- a really funny web series together called Yonic Tonic that I just found out they're going to – they're starting that back up. Nice. And 
I've met a bunch of New York comics. I got to see my friend Dan Wicks, who runs uh, he runs a show in Bushwick uh, called Pop Collar. You can find him on Instagram, Pop Collar Comedy. Um, I got to do that show, and then I got to see some other artist friends from from Burlington. My friend Matt Cruz. Uh, he's in a band called Lizard Women. I got to see my friend Phil Jackson. He's a f uh, really talented photographer and skater. Retired and NFL quarterback. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, Phil Jackson. It sounds like an NFL Yeah, player. it does. Oh, it does. <laughs> Phil Jackson is actually the name of a guy that I think he was the head coach of the Celtics or something like that. Dude, that Good sounds enough. perfect. <laughs> Phil Jackson, yeah. head coach of the Celtics. Philly. I would totally believe that. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Phil. I wish, like, we could just go back to that time and be like, oh, dude, I totally believe that. And <laughs> no one pulls out a phone to, like, be like, no, um, well, you're wrong. Uh, right. Yeah. Sorry. That's so true. Uh, that's so true. Jesus that Christ. Shit, dude. When the truth was a democratic. <laughs> yeah, we all yeah, agreed exactly. on the truth because we made it up. When we all. <laughs> oh, let me get my encyclopedia. Dude, democracy Britannica. was thrown out the window when the fucking internet was around, dude. Smartphone. Well, we couldn't just make shit up and agree. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's smart. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's fucking good and bad in its own ways, dude. Like the ancient Greeks, they didn't like democracy for a different reason. Yeah. Like the the philosophers at that time were like, we want to fuck kids. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> These people are voting against us fucking kids. This shit is not working. <laughs> Greeks hated democracy, dude. Man, boy. <laughs> 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 yeah, and they hated what's his name? Jebus. Plato. S Socrates. Do they love <laughs> oh, oh they killed Socrates. They killed Socrates. Damn. They they poisoned him with uh Hemlock. Hemlock. Sick. They made him that was like the execution back then. You had to drink hemlock and it would just make you fucking just <laughs> I can't believe it. You had to do it yourself. You had to do it That's yourself. That's cold blood. You had to have some people watch you make you drink it. And you're just like, oh my god! And he <laughs> just fucking nailed that shit, and just, dude, Socrates was real to the fucking end, dude. He was real to the end. Socrates. He was like kind of like uh, he was kind of like Greek Jesus in a way, dude. He was a martyr. Fucking did it up, and Plato wrote all his shit down. Mm-hmm. Plato wrote all his shit down, and then Archimedes came out, dude. The Greeks. What was were, wait? What was Archimedes' deal? Archimedes was um he was so so Plato was a student of Socrates. And Archimedes was a student of Plato. So Plato, you know, learned from that. And then Archimedes took it to the next level. Archimedes was kind of like a, like a scientist, an inventor. He was kind of like a Leonardo da Vinci type character. Yeah. And so he invented like the well, water screw, all kinds I guess, of things. I guess Leonardo da Vinci was a... Exactly, exactly. You're right. You're Archetypical right. Archimedes. <laughs> Archetypical. <laughs> yeah, man. He, he, he kind of took that philosophy <laughs> to the next level. He, he kind of brought it. He was kind of the inventor of what they call like metaphysics. Oh, metaphysics cool. was the combination of philosophy with science. Yeah. And he was like one of the main drivers of that. Nice. And yeah, and then Da Vinci carried that on. But yeah, they were fucking dope, dude. And they fucking hated democracy. They didn't think those guys did. They didn't like it. Be yeah. They, you know, if you read, if you read, the Republic, like Socrates is kind of, he's basically just kind of said, like, look, everybody's meant to do their own kind of thing in society, and there are only so many people that are fit to make the decisions for the good of everyone. And that was oh, basically yeah. his kind of philosophy. Was basically like a lot of people don't even fucking know what's good for them. I mean, it's kind oh, of a very yeah. elitist. It's a very elitist way of thinking. Yeah. But that's that was kind of like the, I don't know. Nobody's well, that's really, interesting. I never like. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot. I read uh I read Sophie's World. You know that book? It's like it's a fictional story, but it's kind of like a philosophy 101. Mm -hmm. It's a, I think it's like the thickest book I've ever read. Sophie's World. But yeah. I was dating a girl named Sophie, a woman. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a stunning <laughs> Cuban woman. Ooh. Wow. Sophie, she Sophie. will not talk to me anymore. <laughs> 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 she wised up, dude. Yo, she, br <laughs> dude. Yeah. She broke up with me on New Year's Day, and I did my first comedy open mic seven days later. Sophie, but Ooh, Sophie's choice. Sophie literally, <laughs> yeah, it literally means wisdom in Greek. R right, yeah. She showed me that book, yeah. But it, it sounds like you. Have, so she you, shows that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is she showed me her world. 
<laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Sick, dude. Maybe she only exists in my mind. Maybe that's why she won't talk to me anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe you that's why book, she won't dude. return What else do you have to say? Yeah, dude, Wait, so... Trophy when you got the book. It sounds like you have... R- Read a lot some about knowledge. philosophy or, or a good amount. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, I really like that kind of shit. Oh, it's so cool. It's it's, it's, it's kind of like a it's <laughs> it you. It, Steve Martin has a joke about it. He's like, "Who here studied philosophy?" And then he's like, "You can always tell the people who did because their hand is sort of like half raised. Like, <laughs> did I really study? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's crazy because the information is timeless." Yeah. yeah, the first thing I picked up on when I when I I, I read the Republic, we, I had like a philosophy class in high school or whatever, mm-hmm. and then like in college I really got into it, and it's ultimately why I dropped out because I was like, this <laughs> is. <the> <laughs> 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 I know, right? <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> what what stuck out to me was the information. Like you you read something and what's it was amazing cuz you really you feel like an actual timeless connection with that kind of Dude. questioning yeah. of existence. Like no matter how much we learn like like you look at like a guy like Socrates and right now I'm reading um Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Uh-huh. He was a Roman Caesar. He was fucking dope. He was uh, we were <laughs> he was watching. Like, fucking dope. <laughs> he was fucking dope. <laughs> he was fucking dope. He was one. They call him like the last of the Stoics. Like the. Uh-huh. Get he it was together. A stoic ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he was stoic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now Listen get now. this. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker. It is cool to like picture. It's it, dude. It's just it's. It's like it's almost like the best way I can describe it is like it's reading something you already know, but yeah. you've never heard it said before. Yeah. It's like it's like it sounds gay as shit the way I'm about to say it, but like it, it's like it's <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like you it's, were sounding so smart. Though. I know, I know, <laughs> right? Really? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Look, guys, I know I'm about to sound like a bitch ass fag. <laughs> 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 but Socrates really had some was a dope <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god, we just fuck. Okay, it's it's I don't know, man. It's just it's just it's like the more we find out, it's the more we you know like these guys were writing this shit. I was amazed to even find out you know Marcus Aurelius this was written in 160 something A.D. Uh-huh. and he was speaking about the atom. And I didn't know they fucking had any concept of the atom back then yeah. in that time period. But they, like, we kind of discount it. And, and it's such, like, a typical thing. Like, when you're online, people are like, oh, are you really going to trust, trust the ideas of fucking, like, <laughs> hunter-gatherers in the <laughs> desert 4,000 years ago? It's like, actually, they were kind of dead on on certain shit, man. Yeah. It's like, these guys were having these ideas before Isaac Dute never fathered ever fathomed gravity mm-hmm. before before Albert Einstein ever fathomed the theory of relativity all this shit all this shit that we have scientifically come to be able to prove eventually yeah. was stuff that they conceptualized millennia ago and that kind of knowledge is fucking timeless yeah yeah it, it's just it's wild it's wild to just to just understand that that they were most Dude, kind they, of were, they were they were people first of they all. They were people. They were just people, just like you and I. Yeah. It was just now. No different. It was like they had no concept that this yeah. would eventually be a thing. It was just yeah. that was the furthest in the future they'd ever been, yeah. and that was it. And just seeing that they had the same thoughts, the same fucking thoughts that we're talking about well, right fucking now. Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all the same type of shit that people wonder and worry about. It all pretty much boils down to the same like do i matter does all this matter you know the question like, is have we, have we gotten any closer to solving it cuz you, right. you and like, you haven't no and we no, you never will like it's a yeah. it's a yeah I believe like we could i philosophy, think philosophy philosophy is fascinating or it's funny like that cuz you end up more confused <laughs> <laughs> like you th- the more you learn about philosophy the less you know or you know what I mean? It it's is a rabbit hole. It is a fucking rabbit hole. And that absolutely. guy, um, that dude from Them Animals, Jamie, Jamie was telling me about that. Because he, he, he's like 
a year or two older than me and he told me about this experience he had on ayahuasca and how like when he came back from it he was like super like just questioning everything and he was like yeah. man it, like you get to a point where you're just questioning everything so much that you just become cynical you just you just realize that there's a it, it, like the yeah, rabbit hole can... is the best way to describe it because it's like every like yeah you can get paralyzed we by rising to a new level of intellectuality you create a whole new set of problems yeah. It's like when you talk about like the world, like we were t listening earlier, like the Joe Rogan podcast, and, and Joe was saying, like, you know, a cat has no concept of the internet. Yeah. In a cat's world, because they're not risen to that level of intellectual, or maybe they are. Who fucking know, who's to be the judge of what intelligence is? Yeah, it's really just us because we're the ones yeah. dictating it. Yeah, yeah. But like in a cat's world, that whole problem of like all the shit we're dealing with right now with the internet and everything like that—that's a problem we created. Yeah. That's a problem that would not have existed had we not created it. Yeah. So every every time you rise up to a new fucking level, you're faced with the same dilemma yeah. in a different. It's just it, packaged it's, it's just, differently. It's just yeah. a it's just the same thing in a new, exactly in a new fucking package. Yeah, and that's why philosophy is so important because it 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 questions the ultimate questions, not all the shit that we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's like uh, uh, it makes you think about what you're doing and why. And I mean, it is. Oh, yeah, you can, like, you you can. It can paralyze you. You can, yeah. it can fuck you up. And that's the, and then you got to tell a fart joke or something. Get yourself <laughs> exactly. Back. You just got to go take yeah, a walk or something. You know, like it's for a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is. Or what? A, or yeah, like just to talk to somebody or. That is the ultimate battle because you got it. You really do have to find a medium because what I just described is exactly the reason why over questioning and it just creates a whole new world problem. So yeah. maybe that's not the method of finding true happiness. Maybe. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, when he well, first said that to me, I was like, "Damn." Yeah. I was like, "Man, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to keep asking more, 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 more." Yeah. But then you got to sit back and be like, "Am I ever gonna be yeah, satisfied?" Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good to. It's good to think and contemplate and wonder about these things, but then you can't you can't like chill for you got to keep moving, you know. You got to like you got to dwell on it too much. Yeah, you got to like, you yeah, got to take like the rabbit hole like you're talking about. Yeah, and you got to take that knowledge and apply it to your actions. Yeah, you know? I think I think it's healthy as long as it gives you purpose. Yeah, because there is always that problem where a lot of people reach this state of what they call nihilism. Where they yeah. just think that just nothing matters. They question it down, and I that that's a lot of things that that guy earlier I forgot his fucking name Russell something, but he was talking about postmodernism. Uh, Russell Stover. Brand or who? Um, the guy we watched it was dumb as fuck. Um, oh, yeah. was his last like, name um the love muscle? <laughs> 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 it does sound like a guy that's dumb as fuck. <laughs> he just I don't know, like he was talking about postmodernism. And how postmodernism, the ultimate end game of it, is just deriving everything down to nothing is real, nothing matters. Yeah. There's nothing. There's oh, yeah. not. It's just kind of like you can see very easily how that would eventually lead to a state of just emptiness. You know. It's almost like you kind of <laughs> yeah, have. Yeah, you kind of yeah, have to believe. You kind of have to believe that there's something real, or else nothing matters. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to, but I mean, I just can't imagine existing in a world where it doesn't. Yeah. Do you Oof. think? Uh, do you think comedy gets you into like a transcendent place? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. For, yeah, I. Yeah, they're. Oof. I feel like they're like dope sets where it's like you ch you tune into something. You yeah. Know what I mean like you channel something or like I don't know. It's a it's I I wouldn't call it spiritual, but it is like some sort of like weird wavelength that like you fucking catch something. Yeah. Transcendental's a good word that you use. Just like you're transcending onto a different thing that you like it's like a it is it is a different wavelength. It's like a yeah. different vibration that you're experiencing, dude. Yeah, everything's cool. I mean nothing Oh, nothing fucking feels that good <laughs> when you're when yeah when you're killing. Yeah. And it's cool. It's cool too because everybody, like, you tend to think of it in an egocentric sense, but 
in that moment, like everybody in that room is having a fucking blast. But know? isn't that like, like there might the be a ultimate, there might be a like, few people of human people? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And to be honest, dude, that's the only thing to me that like that experience that we're talking about right now. Like when you connect with people on that level. Yeah, that's that's one of the only things that makes it work like it, it's one of the few it's one of the only things potentially that makes it seem like it like like it that has to be like you have such a sense of fulfillment and joy about it like such a like like this is it this is it yeah you almost yeah. have to believe there's something there's got to be a reason for that you know because yeah. if nothing mattered it wouldn't that kind of shit like it's just like it, it's i don't know how to i don't know how to put it best i'm sorry no, yeah, no, no, yeah. It's a, it's a really difficult. It's, thing it's to put It's one in of the few. Sure. It's one of the few like questions that you kind of have an answer for, in a way. Yeah. Well, it's like a. Oh yeah, it's it's insane. I, I mean, there's so many variables. The, the range of like subject matter is insane. Mm -hmm. y you know, you've got, uh, maybe you've got. You know, you have people that have extremely well-crafted, funny, well-crafted arguments about race and religion and politics and gender mm -hmm. and things that are presented in a really fun way. Mm -hmm. That crush. And then you have somebody like me that, or like, uh, well, I would say Mike Kaplan has a combination of all things. But mm -hmm. then you have other people that are just like, hey, these two... Here's like a fart joke that rhymes, and then it <laughs> and it gets yeah. the same fucking Dude. and it, and it, it but the end result is a bunch of people laughing. Like it's just so cool that a com some combination of words can get a bunch of people. It can like uh, it can uh, circumnavigate conscious thought mm -hmm. to yeah. where all of a sudden you're just like convulsing and yeah. like about to piss your pants. And it's kind of like yeah, like like the language so cool. itself. Language itself is kind of like a crude description of what's really going on in our mind yeah yeah it's like telepathy you know you're taking a night you're you're uh to i mean yeah i just heard i heard terrence mckenna say that one time but it's interesting yeah you got this thing like you're in your mind by yourself yeah and, and you can like use you can use these like grunts and moans to to, to make to, somebody to paint a picture in somebody else's mind yeah. it's like you were saying with reading it's so fucking cool that you can like pick up a book and all of a sudden you are like seeing the world through someone's eyes that has been dead for fucking three thousand years. Yeah. yeah. And they're you know and they're like uh, again, they're like a person just like you, like they gotta eat and they wanna fuck and you gotta molest people. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. You're that kinda 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 has like been Archie's. the progress of like all of humanity. We've just been getting better at communicating with each other. If you really think about it. Yeah. The yeah. one thing that stands at the one pattern that pervades all the time yeah. is that we've just gotten better and better at communicating with each other yeah now we're to a point where we're globally connected yeah. like like it started with language in the first like we're probably the first first of all we're easily the only one on the planet that's this advanced at at communicating with each other i don't know Maybe. I, don't, I don't agree with that necessarily okay. i think that i think Fair that's enough. a uh anthrocentric or like uh I don't know. Human centric. I, communication either. is just communication. It's like uh, talking on the phone is no different than talking in person. I don't know. I I just think. Uh, but you can do it over a wider range. Yeah, I guess so. But then you know, like a dolphin you in know, the Atlantic Ocean can't talk to a fucking dolphin in California. We can't. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I have. I get. I I would say that I have strong opinions about this it's really difficult for me to express them i just don't i don't think that me being able to talk to someone in china is any is inherently like better or more advanced than a dolphin being able to talk to his cousin you don't something. think so because i feel like no, i don't i don't i mean i think it's because you know you know when you're like you could be like in a relationship with someone and they're sitting right next to you and you can't you can't communicate with them, but you're like texting with somebody in California or something. Like yeah. That's True. a shitty feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. True, but that feeling would probably exist whether the texting out was there or not. Like if you're not able to, yeah, be there present with someone else, that's a problem in and of itself. Yeah. 
It's just you have a different outlet. Yeah. I guess so. I don't know. I man, I wish that yeah, I'm failing at communicating. No, it's right all now. good. Nah, it's dude, all good. We can pop out of this rabbit hole. Yeah. Where are you going to after Baltimore? <laughs> oh <laughs> um <laughs> I'm going to uh Oh, okay. I went to I just I feel like I want to give props to the people on this trip. Mm -hmm. So I went to yeah, Philly. Sure. Went to Philly and my friend John Deary was kind enough to let me host uh Mike that he helps run in uh at Fergie's pub in Philadelphia, which is on Sunday nights. And that was a lot of fun. And I also got to see uh um, I also got to see my friend Benny Feldman, who has been in my zine. I, John and Benny have both been in the zine. Nice. And yeah, Benny Feldman, I bumped into him at a mic, and uh, and it was really fun. He did a super good set. He's a really good joke writer, one-liner dude. And uh, he's actually going to be on Tosh.0 on, like, October. Nice. Third or something like that. I don't know. That's dope. But he's really f he was on World Star. What um, do you do? He it's a stand up set he did at uh, I think it was Drexel University. Okay. He he has Tourette's. Mm -hmm. Nice. And <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where it's like he like f I uh he has Tourette's. He's a super good joke writer. And uh, he said like the end. But he or something. uh <laughs> he full yeah he fully has it and uh. and it and it. But he, oh, the way like he incorporates it into his stand up is like so cool. Like, he's just like, I call, I said he's jazzy. Like, he has a really cool way of moving and be bopping around. And, and That's I don't know, like, he, you know, how, you know how like Mitch would say stuff funny? Mm -hmm. Like, he'd say funny stuff in a funny way. Like, yeah. Benny's Hedberg? like that too. Like, Super good jokes, but he just delivers them in a way that's like really cool and jazzy, nice. and and he's kind of like a one liner s guy as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you always a one liner guy, or did you used to start out? Yeah, with basically. I think you know, maybe in my first year, I. How long have you been doing it, by the way? Three and a half years, a little over three and a that's half. That's all. Two thousand. Oh, I started two thousand January eighth, two thousand fourteen. Oh, okay, damn. Yeah. Damn, but anyways, you should check out Benny. He's going to be, uh, when I expand my zine, uh, he's going to be, I'm going to interview him. Nice. And, uh, yeah, he's he's a cool dude. He, uh, he uh, I don't know, we just, it's cool. It's I went to Philly, I saw him at this this open mic Medusa, and I just tend, I tend to gravitate toward other one-liner comics. And it's yeah, kind of like we a just unique like thing in a way. Took you a don't long see ass. too many. We walked like four miles to his house at like two in the morning, and I just got I just got tight with him. So it was, it was great to see him and and John. And I met a bunch of other awesome people in Philly. And um, yeah. So I'm here till Saturday. Then I go to DC. Uh, and to, for like four days. Then I'm going to Richmond, Virginia for two days. Wilmington, North Carolina for two or three days, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Birmingham. There's the there's the turn. Yeah. There's the little yeah. and then uh, the all the all those cities like two, three, four days maybe, and then uh, I don't know anybody in I don't know anybody in Columbia or Atlanta. What made you choose? Well, I understand Atlanta, but what about Columbia? Just connecting dots, you know? Like, okay. there was a... I, I just don't like... I don't like skipping a city if it's on the way. You yeah. know? I just <laughs> yeah. want to see yeah, every... True. And, like, yeah, there's yeah. there's comedy. There's scenes in, like, every single city. So it's fun to just show up. I love just showing up with my backpack, and everyone's like... Who's this guy? What are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing here? And it's like, oh, I, I came to do stand up. And they're like, oh, like, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, do you have a car? No, I'm on the bus. Where are you staying? I don't know. Do you have a couch? You know, it's fun, dude. <laughs> it's fun. It's that type of shit where, like, you think about it and it's like, if you were a comic and somebody came to your town and they were nice yeah, yeah, and yeah. they were kind of funny. Yeah. You'd want to hang out with them, you know. So it's it's just a neat way to 
Is that like your ultimate thing? You just want to get to a point where you can just exist off of that income, or like why? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to be. I there's nothing more that I want than I've I've never wanted anything more than to do it full time, and I I know I know that I'll fucking get there or die trying, but also like like I said, it's just. It's so fucking fun. Like even just doing mics and like doing mics in like weird small cities and <laughs> or small towns even like doing yeah. like weird music mics and shit. It's just neat. Like it's always fun. Everybody loves to laugh and you have a cool way of just enjoying that that part of it, dude. Well, I, I try like to that just turn so many people off. I try to be conscious of that like how it's really easy to be like oh this sucks like no one was at my show or fucking this and that but then if you really if like if you're a comic and you've been doing this for however long there's nights where there's four people there and it's the fucking most amazing thing feeling you've ever had there i mean there's times yeah like I know for me personally, like I have a bunch of street jokes or whatever. Like I, I can vividly remember telling some couple, uh, I had just r- written. It's like my favorite street joke I've ever written, and I wrote it at this McDonald's in a, uh, right off the New Jersey Turnpike, and I told it to some old couple eating in the McDonald's, and they loved it. Like it killed <laughs> for two people, and it's like that's fucking comedy, like. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you're crushing for 200 people, but, like, it's all fucking relative. Like, you're just, you're trying to make the world a better, you're trying to make people laugh, and it doesn't matter if it's fucking, and it, I don't give a fuck how corny it sounds or whatever, but there is no difference in my mind between two people in a McDonald's and 200 people at Mugubis or whatever that, you know? It's all the same shit, you know? Like, everyone wants to feel good, and everyone... Yeah, it's just it, and it's just neat. You just think like how cool, uh, you know. W- what if somebody came up to you? You're at the bus stop. What if somebody came up to you and it was like, "Yo, I'm gonna fucking rub your feet for ten minutes." <laughs> That's dope. That's like a cool <laughs> thing to do, you know. And like I you can, know, I don't know if I'd let someone rub my feet. <laughs> yeah, if they okay. came up to me at a bus stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get or like what if a shit, you know, you get it? Sh- no, you get like, it. Like what, get if, it, get it. <laughs> what if? What if? What if you're like at a bus stop in the fucking like? I get the, what you're saying, but this <laughs> fucking metaphor isn't. Well, what if? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a foot fetish. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, dude. It's like I have a six-inch fetish. <laughs> <laughs> I have two six-inch. F- okay, I do have a foot fetish. <laughs> this is math, but uh, <laughs> you know, like, what if you're like chilling at the bus stop and the fucking Starbucks lady comes up or guy with the tray <laughs> of samples, you know, <laughs> of like, you want some biscotti, and you're like, where the fuck is Starbucks? I don't know. I just felt like walking, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I-, I got these little pieces of biscotti in my mind. That make people feel good. Yeah, that's no, such I'm, a, I'm on this one, dude. That's, <laughs> such, no, that's such a healthy. That's such a healthy way of going about it, dude. Yeah, like I feel like a lot of people they they go through those same exact like what they. It's just in how you look at it, you know. Yeah, it, absolutely. Like, it's, it's all in your perspective. You, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like people will go on and have those same experiences. Be like, yeah, I don't know, man. I have to fucking sleep in the back of a U-Haul truck. Like, I'm fucking sleeping on people's couches. Like, I don't know if this is worth it, but like that you actually fucking enjoy that shit yeah yeah yeah. which is like that that's that's the only way you can be in and a that way. and it's not to say like i dread it and i hate it too <laughs> in portland my <laughs> i didn't have a warm enough sleeping pad i didn't have a warm enough bag and my sleeping pad deflated <laughs> and it sucks like it still sucks where are you sleeping out in portland just out and about in maine or? yeah well i slept like i said i slept in a giant cardboard tube okay. one night yeah, and then shit. i slept in the back of a u-haul okay so that was in maine okay. yeah yeah sorry and so but it's gonna that's the thing it's gonna suck either way it, like dude, that, that's it's gonna the suck. deal <laughs> my life dude i've dude i'm always gonna be like a hypercritical depressed person and comedy uh comedy and joke writing it's not to say that it's my only escape. There's a lot of other things too, but it's my favorite escape from that shit. And every moment of every day, I have a choice wherever I am to uh, to use that tool to get out of my mind, you know? And it's fun. Jesus and that's Christ. why, like I said, like 
that you're always in the prism of your own experience. And if I'm, like I said, dude, sometimes it's 200 people at a club and sometimes it's a homeless dude at a bus stop. And it's fucking, it's really like we're all going to fucking die yeah. <laughs> anyways. And, it, and it's like I've never, I've never regretted telling someone. It, it's never like, oh, I wish I didn't tell that homeless yeah, guy dude, that no one's basketball gonna, joke. Like, feel weird about having a joke told to him. You know what yeah. I mean? Dude, I feel like you would really, really enjoy that guy. Make someone's day. That, yeah. Um, that because that what you just described was that remember i was talking earlier about like the stoics and shit like that yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's that mindset yeah it's just the mindset that 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 your perspective controls everything you'd really enjoy reading about that dude it would absolutely yeah yeah it would would stick out to you for sure all right yeah let me uh what's his name i'll write it down right now yeah dude i hope this makes this i love libraries (laughs) <laughs> We're just networking yeah, man. with f- <laughs> the Stoics. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Marcus, like regular ass. Oh, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. Right? I've yeah. heard the name. I feel like Gift of Gab, like ra- rhymes with his name or something. How do you spell his last name? A U R E L I U S, I think. Might be without the first U. I don't know. If you go, nice. it's gonna come up, dude. I don't think there's any like pop singer named Marcus Aurelius. It's gonna <laughs> <laughs> jump on this be. cloud. <laughs> yeah, like damn, dude. Try to read cloud. that book, dude. All I got was a banger. I like found a vlog <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Stoics. <laughs> yeah, you know it's called uh, it's called meditations. Weird up. Like, Which I feel like you can't type in meditation because so many fucking different philosophers like Rene Descartes. Well, I don't know. Shit, I've, meditations as Rene well. Descartes. That reminds me. I read like a Thich Nhat Tan book one time. Oh, it's I like read one of those. Big into like that's like de- like the same kind of thing. Like the mindset, yeah. the uh, just like being in, you know, just if like what you're saying. Eckhart you, Tolle, fucking. Terrence McKenna. It's kind of weird because it's like all Joe of Rogan. all of those different. Joe Rogan. All of <laughs> Joe yeah. Rogan. He's homies. He's yeah, homies Rogan. with all the stuff. <laughs> all of, all of those different all of those different philosophies get down to the same thing, and I think it's I think it's I think it's cool that you've adopted it. Yeah. It is. It's 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 dope. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's not. It's, yeah, it's this not is my always most unsuccessful fucking beer. Not always easy. Drink. Yeah, what the hell happened there? I missed that. I Dude, just looked I, over I, in your phone. Every time I every time I take a sip, it's just overflowing. I can't even fucking handle this beer right now. Damn, cut him off. <laughs> Richard, do you notice like audiences particular particularly different in different cities, like north versus the south? No, uh, I I mean I guess. Dude, this. No, it's insane. I guess you're just Comet, dude. Comedy is just like philosophy. Because the more I do it, my brain, like my ego, is like, dude, you've done so many shows. <laughs> you, you're gonna, you get, you're so good and shit. <laughs> and then, and then you just so like good. eat shit. Like <laughs> the more Cereal. you think you know, like you're like, oh, I'm about to crush. And then you just die. Like <laughs> you're like, oh, this joke, this is my best joke I I have. And then. No, in New York, yeah, I had like three crickets. three jokes that have never failed. Got zero at a oh, show I did in New York. Dude. That's how I felt about like my first time in New York, dude. Yeah, I went to the like uh, People's Improv Theater or something. It was their old uh, venue, or I don't even know what the fuck it was called. Yeah, but it was just like small black box theater in like the middle of an art gallery. It was pretty uh-huh. cool, but like I went up there with fucking a game. Yeah, and I fucking ate the biggest dick of my life. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. why? And then like, it was like a super alt show. Like, some dude took his dick out. Like, you know, Jeez. it was like it was a bunch of like weird shit. Yeah. Um, and then Jeez. yeah, dude, that shook me. And then I went to like the creek in the cave for the first time. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck, I've heard about this on podcasts. Uh-huh. Like, I'm so nervous. Mm. And that one okay, but dude, fucking nice. New York is like the ultimate like ego check. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. But that's a question, like, because he originally, asked, well, you originally asked, is the is the audience it, it, are cities different? Oh. And I'm asking, like, is it? <sighs> I mean, dude, it's so like. I I think we were talking about this earlier like it, it's so it's such a difficult thing to put into words that it feels like a waste of time to even try like you just have to be there you I mean there are there's so many variables and there's like I don't know you can't ever okay 
you could never be like, all right, oh, you're going to New York? Okay, here's what you do. Toss out the paper towel material, gonna but keep the uh keep the Johnny Depp material. I don't know, dude. Like, yeah, who yeah. the fuck knows? Because yeah. I that's what I was all about. Is it more is it more the city or is it more your mindset in the it's city? It's all dude, it's always your own mind for sure. Like that sounds good. I don't know, you just gotta all you can ever do is what you feel like is going to be funny. And sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. <laughs> yeah. And and then other times too, like, dude, it drives me insane in particular because, like, I will readily admit and most people, most people that like me will tell, will describe my jokes as dumb. <sighs> and, like, dude, I'll do... I'll have like some joke that I'm so stoked on. And I think it's so smart and it'll eat shit. And then some other joke, like, did you hear about the spider cow? No. It it had eight calves. <laughs> 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 and then something like that will crush. And it d- and like, how the fuck am I supposed to interpret that information? Like, how am I supposed to take that and be like, all right, next time, don't do your Trump joke and do the spider cow joke. And then I'll do that, and then the spider cow joke, people will be like, is this guy fucking serious? Uh, And then you do the Trump joke, and it crushes, and it's like, I don't fucking know, dude. All you got to do, you just got to keep writing. I feel like your jokes are, are like, really, really smart. I'm not just just fucking with you. I'm not just fucking with you. Like, like when you you first came in, and I forgot exactly what you said, it was like something, it was just like, like, it was a fucking one-liner. Yeah, and like it was just like holy shit, that was fucking super witty. Like I like I had forgotten because I've only met you. It was one, my third time on the maybe, show. Maybe was it the third time? It, yeah, yeah, this is the third time. Yeah, once, yeah, you did it with. Yeah, did it once by myself. Colin right? solo, and then now. Yeah, yeah. and it, I just I like when you first I was like oh my god I forgot like he literally just does that shit. It's crazy. Yeah, I just like I just like wisecracking. Mm-hmm. Really, is what it comes down like. But it's smart. It's super it's, smart. It's like it, thanks, it's man. it's so smart. It's like so, because you always run that you always run that like tightrope when you're dealing with one liners. Because like in a, in a way they kind of all have to be kind of cheesy. Yeah. I don't I don't mean that in like a, a no, bad no. way. You can no you can say I don't mean, whatever. I'm you just want. saying like it's just kind of the nature of the art in a way. Yeah. And like but but I think people mistake that for not being good at it. Yeah. Which is because it just it, it's. I, t- I don't know too many people that could do it, and that's probably why there aren't too many one-liners. Yeah, it's are. probably why it's such a rare form of art form. It's definitely the, the minority. I know in my case, I tend to think of it as like a. It's more of a. Um, it's more. I mean, you are relying on the material, but I. T- oh God, whatever. I'm just gonna say this shit. I tend to <laughs> think of it. I've been thinking. I. I'm started. I think of myself more now as like a poet mm-hmm. sort of or like kind of like jazzy. Like that's what I think of. I think of sets. They're like loose arrangements, you know? Yeah, for like sure. Like I have a loose idea of what I'm going to do. But you don't know when you're doing it. Yeah. And and some sometimes I do. Like I did a show in Brooklyn and I, I came up with a set. And I did it. I did it exactly as actually. Actually, I got a nosebleed. <laughs> the moment they said my name, my Damn. nose started bleeding, <laughs> and so I went up. But I have a, um, I have a, a bloody nose joke. So <laughs> I did that off the top. But then I did my exact set list. And once in a while, I'll do that. But I don't know. It's just. It's about. I'm forced in writing the jokes that I've ha- that I have it's kind of forced me into this manner of performing where I just have to follow my, I mean, every performer has to follow their intuition, but I, th- in my case in particular, it's like, Oh, like I just get this feeling where it's like, Oh, I bet that fucking eight calves joke, that spider cow joke will kill right now. That's and it's so weird because there's no, <laughs> you could never be like, okay, there's, Okay, there's 72 white people and there's uh <laughs> there's uh there's 29 black people and there's one Mexican guy. Okay, do 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 like oh, do the spider joke. You know, like you could never uh, there's no way that you could ever consciously But if you're like riding off like a fucking oh, I just did like a joke about fucking like 
and whatever. Like yeah. you can make some weird like connection in your brain, like on the spot, like the, with the adrenaline. Like I told yeah. you, yeah, like that's what fucking... I think is so dope. Is that you're like I because it's to... like it, yeah. it's it's your brain almost just like computing it out for you mm-hmm. immediately because you're like because it's what Whoa. you immediately think of after you tell that joke. So it's like yeah. it already connects somewhat mentally. Yeah. And it works. And it leads to an all that's what I was trying to point out earlier was like you were talking about um doing that prison show. Yeah. You were like you made that like breaking out joke or something like that. Yeah. And it was like or, yeah, I can't take them anywhere. I mean those are yeah. <laughs> those are all written jokes yeah. that I have. But it, it's written, but at the same time it's like you weave it into a like a overarching narrative in a way. Sort of, yeah, yeah. Uh, that you tricked me, dude. When you when you fucking told that prison story, you you told like a solid like three one-liners in a row and i was following the story yeah, <laughs> just yeah, like, yeah i was like all right this is a story and in between these gaps he's fucking just nailing me with these fucking yeah. quips you know that that's that's i don't know if that's what you're trying to do it is dude <laughs> okay. that's what it's dude comedy is so dope because you're comedy is like so dope it's so fucking funny because you're like you're like all right like uh, you know, give me five bucks and I'll let you go in this room. <laughs> and then uh, someone's going to get on stage and they're going to fucking trick you over and over again. <laughs> and you want it to happen and you know it's going to happen, but you still don't know. Like, yeah. it's such a weird thing. Like, fucking intellectual and that, magician, dude. Yeah. I, I feel mean, like that's that's one of the things you're wrestling with where it's like, <laughs> what, what's true about the, the actual person behind the jokes? And yeah. it's just a joke. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. I struggle with that a lot, and that and that's something where a lot of comics, a lot of comics will be like, "Oh, dude, like you're such a good joke writer. Like I could never write jokes like that." But then I I envy so much comics who can tell these deeply personal stories and like reveal all this really deep stuff which I, I do a little bit but like someone who d- like tells some really intense story about their mom dying or something and can make it hilarious like yeah. that's so cool and i i definitely i mean it's all relative you know like i'm just like fuck like i you just told this like super enthralling entertaining informative hilarious story and it, i don't know it's just, it's so neat it's so neat how varied it is like i think that could be your niche dude yeah I really do. What's I mean, yeah, it's a I don't real I always wonder if like I'll change direction someday, but I don't know. Well, but that's you though. Yeah, yeah. And and like what you were saying like the connections and stuff. It the more like at this point I feel like I'm sort of like swamped. Like I'm dr- I'm like drowning in jokes. Like I could never I can never tell all the jokes that I want to. But and I realized this like pretty early on like a lot of you start out and they're like oh you, they say it takes like five to seven years to find your voice and when you're starting out you're like oh, five to seven years <laughs> but now i'm just like i'm like i need a lifetime to figure out how to do this and it and it's so cool because it's like i uh i'm constantly progressing and it's so fun to travel and like see my friends progress too in this like incremental way you know, yeah, yeah. like I haven't seen you guys in, you know, I haven't seen you guys in like nine months. Yeah. So all of us have made progress in that time. Yeah. And it's neat to see that. And yeah, like I just like I have these ideas of like where I can see myself going and it's there's no shortcut to it. You know, you just have yeah. to like write and fail and try it. And like I sort of like my dream or where I see myself going is a uh, like just real tight uh poetic one liners that are weaved together in this really like intricate and very densely packed way. Like at, like uh MF Doom is my favorite rapper. Yeah. And it's like that dude, like the amount the amount of like information and rhymes that are packed into a and doom verse just is storytelling dude. Fucking insane. It yeah, just like one out. and jokes story, dude. and yeah. yeah. Jokes. Like and that's where I'm like, I, I like, I, oh, I think about it like, like this all the time. Like, I just, I have all these Legos and I keep making more. And I don't even, like, today I went and I was like, okay, like, I'm going to like figure out some bits and like type out some bits and figure out some transitions and try to make some salt. And I sit down to write 
and then I just get distracted and I wrote like 30 jokes, like 30 new jokes. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't not fucking write it down, you know? <laughs> and then next thing you know, like I'm like reading the wildebeest fucking Wikipedia page. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and then I'm texting my buddy jokes and then I'm like telling jokes to the people at mom's and like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, two hours goes by and like Jordan's picking me up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but, and it's, yeah, it's like so. Were you doing a thing earlier today? It's cool, but, well, we hung out, like me and Jordan and uh, Travis Marshall went out and uh, oh, yeah. shot some photos. Like Boys. Travis Travis did some yeah, headshots good, good for photo me. Good photo boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we, uh, He's been on the podcast. He has. Nice. He has. Yeah, yeah and I yeah, was... He's a hard worker. Were you there for that, too? For uh, No, I wasn't here for that. Oh, okay. Okay. I like that. was Ian well. and Ben Smith. No, yeah, it was... Yeah, it was yeah, okay. I remember now. R.I.P. Ben Smith. Damn, dude. And, yeah, and Jordan was taking photos. And we was cracking... We were cracking jokes and just riffing and... I don't know, just wandering. Oh, we walked down the... The Ave. The Ave... Nice. Richard nice. Had, had his mic on. Ooh, yeah, his amp. Ooh. I did. There you go. Oh, dude, you get some nice uh, photos with the amp on? I think so, yeah. Nice. I kind of did a set in front of a barber shop. Oh, yeah. Where are you Old from, Bank by barber? the way, dude? I'm from Rockville. Rockville? Moco, yeah. yeah. Oh, we were just talking about Rockville the other episode, dude. It's harder we than were. Metalville. We were, dude. True. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don Neal did a sh- Don Neal. <laughs> is that like a. Is that like a. Because. We had yeah, Don Neal was on last week and you were like, yo, was it like one person in that city? Is that a big city? No, Rock- I was saying there's one Cadoba in Rockville. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> one Cadoba. One Cadoba. What's that? It's a one Cadoba town. <laughs> What's the new one horse town? You don't know the Cadoba? It's like Chipotle, but it's uh, great. Wait, they don't have it's Cadoba? But it's great. <laughs> it's amazing. It's Cado it's Chipotle if Guac and Queso were free. And everybody continues oh, cool. to pretend that Chipotle's better and it. It honestly the blows meat's my like mind. juicier and it, like, dude, it's just better. It's just it's like one better. of those things. People are just like, oh, Chipotle, Chipotle. It's like, no, dude. Like, they why would I pay two dollars for cilantro. guac? Dude, Cadoba's oh, the yeah. shit. Cadoba's dope. You know Cadoba. You're from Rockville. I'm, I'm you got, you, you, have you got the, that one Cadoba the down one. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got that one Cadoba <laughs> down yeah. there. Right, meets up. Yeah. No, Rockville's. It's it's not like a big city or anything. It's just like kind of suburban. It's it's not too far from DC. They got a I micro th- center and an old Korean mall. There you go. What's the Korean mall? Uh, it's I, I mean it's like liter- it's like an old school Korean mall like, and they, but it's I'm not like familiar all, with the the old school. It's the Korean one with mall. the micro center in it. Oh, okay, I can see that. Cause dude, it's I, I mean I didn't know that's where that was from. Cause I was like, this is interesting. It's what got a big mean? escalator. There's a big oh, dude. They're tiny escalators. They got fucking escalators this big. Yeah, damn, dude. It's Korean crazy. size. <laughs> I didn't want to say, <laughs> <laughs> but I will. It's dropping all the fucking breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm the one that makes my ass. No, myself. but I mean the the Crown downtown is like an old Korean mall too. Gotcha. Like it's just like, and they still have oh, great Korean okay. food too. They have yeah. good Korean food at the Crown. They do. Yeah, good. that food got rebought by good. Koreans. Yeah, it it's sense. like it has a lobby and it has it doesn't have a fountain or anything. It just has one stand that just sells dog tags and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a good place. Custom dog tags. Yeah. It's a quality Sick. place. Why are you up in Why are you up in Baltimore? By the way, did you go to Towson School? Yeah, Towson. Yeah, doing sorry, nice. quit, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry we couldn't keep you. Wait, oh uh, yeah. Oh, you graduated? I haven't graduated yet. Actually. All right, cool. So and we're on the same. We're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Get out while you still can, man. Take a philosophy course. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> exactly. don't listen to these boys. Read yeah, Archimedes and no, t- get school. back to me. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what year are you? Oh, he's hella close. Last year, or my last semester, I'm graduating in, in December with uh, yeah. doing graphic design. Dope. So he's in the home. You designed the um, the fucking uh, the Baltimore comedy yep. shit. The rat. The rat logo was good. Thanks. I like yeah. the rat logo a lot. That was good. So dope. No offense to any of my other friends, but Jordan did the best zine cover I've ever had. Oh, thanks. Uh, number eight. Yeah, it was like a weird, uh, like bird, like a an board. ostrich type of thing with long, like human arms. That's or like dope. bendy. Nice. Yeah. Yep. I do a lot of posters and stuff. Did you? 
I'm taking you're around my age, like 24, 25. I'm 22. Really? Damn, you're young, dude. Mm-hmm. I had no clue. Barely legal, really. <laughs> Barely legal. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Not That's even two old twos enough in a row. To have sex yet. <laughs> Whoa. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? <laughs> did you start doing comedy like when you came up to Towson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I took a couple improv classes at, at the Baltimore Improv Group, like cool. my first semester. I did two years at community college and then transferred. Community I, college? Montgomery uh, here, College. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, Montgomery, okay. Wait, is Rockville Montgomery County? Yeah. So. Oh, okay. For some reason, I kept on picturing it like on the eastern shore, and I know that's completely wrong. It's like, But it, it's on the water, right? Or am I thinking of Rock Hall? Uh, I, yeah, it's not really on any water. It's just around D.C., like, north of D.C. Okay, yeah, I'm working off a completely different, like, map in my head right now. Oh, hell yeah, here second. we go. So basically, like, yeah, the Towson to the, to Baltimore, like... Oh, really? Like, it was, like, DC. one of those? Oh, that's dope. So I, I interned at the 930 Club. Um, so I spent some time, like, around D.C. and played in some bands and stuff. What do you play? I uh, Guitar. And sing. Oh, Dope, that's right. Dude. Me I totally too. Forgot me you were a too, musician. Dude. Yeah, me and uh, doing that. Me and Leland <laughs> Clayton are trying to start a podcast where we jam with people and do an interview. Dude, Leland, I he was on. Maybe when was when was the last time Leland was on? It was recently, kind of right. Ooh. Who was he on with? Well, with Who's Archie on with when we're jamming, or no, that was the first time he was on. He was on recently with Matt, yeah. Because Leland's had a bunch of I heard like you guys talk about jamming, mm-hmm. dude, dude. Yeah, we we're starting a podcast. We did, recorded one episode with Archie and this other this guitar player, Christy McDonald, who's really nice. good. Leland a is a re- like he he stayed after the last time he was here. It was with Matt Brown. It was probably like two or three months ago. He stayed after, and we fucking jammed until like four in the morning. Yeah, just like yeah. me and him, just like coming up with like different chord progressions. Like he's got, he's got some fucking like, he called them toe tappers, and I thought that was a good way to describe. <laughs> he's got some toe tapping chord progressions, man. Yeah, he's got. You know, he reminded me of like, uh, remember when Umar was here? Uh, yeah. Umar had some toe tappers, but she didn't know when to fucking tap. Like he had some, <laughs> <laughs> like, like he, like he, he kind of played like on some weird ass rhythmic shit. It was weird. It was like he couldn't. He couldn't fucking play in four four. He Whoa, just couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Like all of his shit was in like seven eight or like thirteen six. I was like, what the fuck? Whoa. And it was just how he naturally thought about music. It like blew my fucking mind. That's so dude. Cool. Like playing with him, it was like, cause like in Instead a way, of like one two three four. It'd be like one two three four one two three. It was like, like it was like, like it's just the way. And then you become like it made me think like, damn, I'm so indoctrinated Dude. into this fucking way of thinking about music. Oh, right, like a certain... It's just like... Yeah, it, it is he, weird. Came, he was like putting out crazy shit and Jimmy was like trying to play along with it and he's like, what uh-huh. are you doing? And he's like, oh, I don't know, I'm just playing. Dude, right? <laughs> it's it's wild because it brought... It, it was... it was. Yeah, local. it's a language. It really so is. Cool. And, it, and meter is such like a... a meter is like... I don't know, it's like the way you think. It's literally like the rhythm of your thinking and it's so strange that like... Just because we grew up listening to like four four time as like uh-huh. a main, like that's just that's the way like we this, think. Like yeah. I listen, my grandfather will like teach me Greek music, like like old Greek music on bazooki and shit like that, and it's all on like seven eight and shit like that. And it's wait like a, on what bazooki? Bazooki. It's a um. <laughs> What's that? It's a Greek instrument. It's it's actually it was actually cool. invented after the guitar. So the last, it's basically the bottom four strings of the guitar. So like it's D G B E. But it's a whole note lower, so it's C F A D. Like a bowl back thing. Like yes, dude? yes. I actually have one. I wish I had it here. But it, it's you? dope. <laughs> it's a, it, an each string, so it's a four. It's an eight string instrument, mm-hmm. and it's basically like an octave, octave guitar. So it's the bottom four strings of the guitar, a whole note lower, and and each one is an octave, like a twelve string kind yeah. of. Yeah. It's oh. a really cool instrument. But like he's teaching me how to play these different rhythms, like the zibekiko and all these different things, like zorba the Greek and stuff. And it's like. Like, if you study, like, Eastern music, like, Chinese stuff and things uh-huh. like that, it's just, like, it is kind of mind-boggling to think, like, they literally think in a different Oh, right, like, they have, like, a different standard. Like, it's yeah, a di- yeah. different rhythm of... And, and music represents... Uh, that's what makes music cool, is that it communicates yeah. on a different level. It's, yeah. like, it represents the rhythm of, of you in a way. And it's, like, it's weird how how just because I grew up in this environment that I'm 
programmed in a way to think in yeah. that rhythm. And so I listen to Umar. Something else here. You're like, yeah, what are you and doing? I'm like, wow, that's. First of all, it's fucking. It's it's it stands out yeah. because it's not something you hear every day. But and what I like about bands like Rush and Tool and stuff like that is like uh-huh. a lot of the songs you'll tell people, hey, did you know that shit's in five four time? Oh, never yeah. even know. Listen to uh, Peter Gabriel. Uh-huh. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Salisbury Hill. Okay. It's in five four, and you would never know. Or uh, Rush, Limelight. Didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't Talking Heads use some weird? Yeah, yeah, they did. Like, I, I'm not too. Fa- I'm not. I'm not like as familiar with them as I am with the people I was talking about. But yeah, they definitely. <laughs> <do>. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely did, dude. Thanks. I I kind of I gotta get mad because I don't I don't look into the stuff as much as I feel like I should sometimes. Yeah. That's something you got Well, do. you know what you know. You know a lot about philosophy. Philosophy. Yeah, hey man. Just be positive about that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, isn't it, isn't it neat, too, how you just, like, you just, like, know, like, you know how to do it, you know? And then sometimes you, like, can't communicate it, but you're just like, yeah. ah, let me just show you. <laughs> like, that shit is dope. Oh, this is, speaking of, this is that cover that Jordan did. Nice. Should I hold it? Like, and this is for the rich jokes. Yeah. yeah it's on the other camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't yeah, sure. If, yeah, there we go. Or like if you can bring up an example. Bring up again, dude, just okay, so I can verify that it was definitely on there. Because I'm doubtful. Bada boom. There it is. Bada boom. Hold up closer. Oh, there it is. I like that. Nice. Under the wire. There you go. That's dope. That's a good oh, yeah. cover. That's a good oh, cover. Thanks. It was so crisp. Did you draw that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do it. I do like some digital stuff with a drawing tablet. So I use like. Are you? Do you like? Is your main form of art like drawing, or is it like a little bit of both, like graphic design and illustration? I like to use illustration in like posters with lettering and type and stuff. That's a good fucking cover. Yeah, he's yeah. busy. He's a busy boy. Busy boy. Yeah, I think it's like. A lot of comedy design stuff is usually just practical, like putting people's pictures up and names and stuff. But it's nice to like get get a really solid vibe for something. Yeah, like for a particular show. Yeah, that's what I I always like that about um, Chris Hudson shows. Yeah, like everything will be okay. He always has like a, a very interesting poster. Yeah, I think that's what he works. He works on having that. Yeah, he gets different yeah. people to do all of them. Yeah, it's very. Cool. It is a cool. It's. It's neat how a poster sort of defines a. Uh, it gives you like a mental picture, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, visual representation. Sure. So you like yeah. put yeah, like in your your brain, you like and you like comedy, put the experience so in a folder. Posters, it's yeah. such a it's so such a it's such posters. a cool form of art, and it, Oof, it, yeah, dude. Dude, it's wait, a, let me show you guys this really quick. I had to screen grab this. This is this isn't even like a poster. This is just a comic's name. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck, where is it, dude? Um, shit, I'm I'm flubbing right now. Dude, get it together. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <Nuh-uh, laughs> dude. Tony Viagra, baby. Oh man, <laughs> is that him? That's, that's, that's his Tony name. Tony Viagra himself. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Coke bottle glasses, dude. <laughs> that's a true right best there. dude. He's on his in his beach suit. Where did you <laughs> see that? You saw that on a flyer somewhere? Yeah, flyer on Facebook, dude. Sick. You see so many great flyers on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, that's true. Dude, I've always been like, I've always been like amazed talking to people that like are good at like visual art. Like my girlfriend's real good at visual yeah. art too. It's like I've never been able to fucking draw for shit. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, everybody kind of sees cool, like, images in their head, but, like, it's the moment you put pen to paper that it's like, uh, this is not at all what I was yeah. imagining. Like, it's oh, like, man. Yeah, that is frustrating yeah. when you can see so many. I feel that mind. about, like, music a ton. Well, well, that's absolutely. Well, I fucking suck at music. <laughs> Dude, yeah. but that's, that's what but I was I'll getting like at. I hear a hum or something, you know what I mean? That's what I was getting at. It's like, it's a form of art, it, just like anything else. It's like you're communicating through a different medium. So when you say, yeah. like, he captured the vibe of what was going on at that show through the visual perspective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just as important as capturing it through the comedy perspective or anything else. It's yeah, like yeah, it's like it's it's, it. it's a different 
vehicle of communicating the same idea. Yeah. And it's like, I've always been amazed by people who are able to communicate it visually. Mm-hmm. Like, I never got art. Yeah. I try to sometimes. I try to, like, Ugh. look at paintings and be like... It always makes me feel so dumb. You, dude, dude, the first, the first person that stood out to me, my girlfriend's, like, real into art, and we went to um, uh, Matisse Expose. Uh-huh. Dude, it was weird. It was the first time in my life that, like, you could look at a painting and, like, like examine the strokes and everything like that and, uh-huh. like, really see what he meant by it. Like, yeah, I forgot yeah, exactly what is. category it was. What was it? It was like, um, not, it's it was like, like oil painting, realism right? or, or surreal, not surrealism. Cause that's like, that's like Salvador Dali and all that shit. Right. Like surrealism. Yeah. Things yeah, like that. I think it's probably yeah. expressionist or expressionist. Im- Im- that was it. Maybe? Yeah. Impre- yeah, yeah. One of those two. Mm-hmm. Both of those sounded and fantastic. <laughs> one of Both of those <laughs> sounded dead the fuck on. One it was of one of those two. Yeah. It was one of those two. And I it was like, you know, because a lot of times people always, that's like the classic thing to like kind of like discount art. Like, oh, look, abstract art. Like, you know, Whoa. just fucking throw a painting yeah. on a wall, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, no, it was the way that he took a vivid, realistic image and communicated it through himself that like, it, I, I, dude, and this is coming from someone, I have no fucking clue what I'm looking at. Yeah, you know? yeah. I have no fucking clue, but it stood out. And it was like the first time that I ever appreciated visual art. The same way I have appreciated music and things like that, yeah, and just stood out. I was like, "Damn, you're just totally out of touch with that 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 side of communication." Yeah, and that's that's yeah, all that's what it is. comes down like uh, something like that. It's interesting how like a great piece of work, regardless of the medium, like uh, somebody has this idea in their mind, and they have a compulsion to express it and when someone has put a shitload of work into something like that it's just like palpable you know Mm -hmm. like a piece of work or a or a composition or like a a song or a joke or a painting like it's just it's amazing how it can just have an aura where you can just like tell it's like i don't even get what the fuck you're trying to say but i can tell that you feel very strongly about it and that mm-hmm. you're you worked really hard to make this and that's like that's a cool thing about art yeah even it's, it's like even if you don't understand it you can appreciate the uh the toil or like mm-hmm. the effort that someone has put into something it's kind of weird like did you when you were younger were you did you always have that talent like being able to draw and stuff like that uh not not really naturally i had a i have an older brother who who uh his name's garen he does like really great graphic design and illustration too and he's done mostly stuff for the beer industry and um he was in like this this special art program in high school because he had like a an ability for it so that kind of influenced me and i was like that's a thing you can spend time working on Mm -hmm. so i wasn't really that good going into it but i just like learned the fine art aspects of it did your brother have that talent yeah yeah he was he had a like an aptitude for doing drawing and stuff um, but I kind of had to learn that stuff. And then even now I'm, I'm learning that it's not necessarily that, that you have to be that great at being like realistic at drawing or something, yeah. but you just, you really just have to communicate whatever idea you're trying to communicate. Even if it looks kind of shitty, if you have yeah, crappy lines have like or whatever. style yeah. along with it or something that makes it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying with like how much time you put into something, like I like applying art to a commercial or like quote unquote commercial context. And especially in context like concert posters or, or comedians, like you're putting in the time into really spending time thinking about a concept and then like um, like implementing that into the, the design or illustration or whatever. And so when somebody sees that on the street, they're like, oh, wow, somebody really spent time thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. It's the difference between... Seeing fucking Tony Viagra's picture, like <laughs> shitty, <laughs> shitty pixelated picture. Yeah, weird like MS with Paint his, graphics or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly, and like Courier font or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's a difference between that and like, if somebody took the time to hire someone like Jordan to make a dope poster, then I'm going to assume that whatever that poster is promoting is worth my time to True. go yeah. check out, you know? 
Whereas if it's like a piece of shit, then <laughs> I'm just, like, what is Tony this, Viagra? You know? Yeah. What was that that you just showed? Was that a Snapchat or was that an actual guy's promotional poster? That was a section of a poster that I took a screen grab of. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Seemed good to me. I mean, it was, you know, solid <laughs> type and image. And it Perfect and Times concept. New Roman. It was like, hey, this is Tony Tony Viagra. That's all you have to know. <laughs> is Tony Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Viagra, baby. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever tried Viagra? No. 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 Not I even not. like the shitty, like, I've never even tried the shitty gas station. Lucas Mosca one. used really? to fucking do Cialis. Really? Whoa. He used to take dick pills, as he called them, name. dick pills. <laughs> now I'm dropping his full name. Lucas Mosca. <laughs> Lucas Mosca Did he used snort to it? fucking do dick pills, and I believe those said dick pills were Cialis. And he swore by him, dude. <laughs> he fucking swore by him. I'm, I'm saying like I, I'm saying his name because I don't think it's embarrassing. I don't think it's like it was funny. First of all, it was funny. It was yeah. hilarious that he did dick pills because he was like 22 years old. It's like, why are yeah. you doing dick? He did. It, he was <laughs> like, yo, like you just fucking, you can just you just go out and you just fuck. It's just great, dude. He he was like, you know, he used it. He, he was ahead he of his used, time, dude. Yeah. A, he was ahead of his time. He there's was ahead a, of his time. There's a comic who, uh, I won't say his name, but I think he's post- posted on Facebook like before Valentine's Day. Hey, I got this these pills. It's like some kind of, I can't remember <laughs> what the name was, but it, it's like one of those gas station pills that's just supposed to make you like. I would try it, dude. I would like, definitely try it. Why it's not? like take one. Dude. To, you wouldn't do a dude, dick there's pill? There's boxes Me? and boxes of them at gas stations everywhere. Someone's buying them. Yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm going to get a box. What are they called? I'm going to get a box. I just want to see what they do. Like I just I wonder what happens when I take a dick pill. Crazy man, dude, your dick has so much blood in it, it fucking dude. blows up. Does it just automatically give you a boner? Is it just like raise your testosterone levels? Just like I want to go need a boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need a boner. <laughs> I need a bony. <laughs> exactly, that could be it, dude. I don't know, man. No, I would never try Viagra, man. I heard never? it leads to harder stuff. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm fucking talking about, dude. My uncle actually took too much Viagra one time. That's really sad. Yeah, he had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard with a D. <laughs> <laughs> a hard D. Are there hard Ds? Is that like a is that a grammar thing? There's no, no soft D. Yeah, it's Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was so, dude. I was talking to a uh, who the fuck. I was t- oh 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 I was talking to a a girl from Denmark and she was explaining some of the intricacies of the of their language. Oh no. And she was explaining uh soft Ds. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, what's the word for impotence?" <laughs> and she said it's just that. <laughs> and I was bummed because I was hoping that the Denmark word for impotence had a soft D. <laughs> that would have been a good joke. <laughs> but hey, hey, dude. Um, but hey, Denmark. They don't have any fucking sense of humor. And what's what's the oh the country is called? Dude, Denmark. I asked her. I was, I was like, like, where are people from Denmark from? I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Denmark. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, got her, it, I got it. I got it. I was I like, it. Denmark. That's in the Netherlands, right? <laughs> <It's not. laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Damn, dude, those guys in Scandinavia, man, what are they up to? Mm. Who knows? All right. Well, Richard Bowen, what's your uh, what's your Instagram? All that stuff. Colorblind Bowen. Oh, yep. Colorblind Bowen. Um, I guess that I uh, I quit Twitter. So if you want my jokes, you got to order my zine. Uh, how do how do people get that? You can just hit me up on Instagram. Um, I'm working on making like a web store. I'm going to make a box set of the first 12 issues once once they're done. So probably like the end of this year, beginning of next year. Nice. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, I don't know. I want to put out a half hour. I don't know what I'm going to do it, it though. But just, yo, if you're out there and you live in a city... <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> I'm up. Come there. But yeah, if you're I'm probably if, already there. <laughs> yeah, but if yeah, if you're in if you're in D.C., Richmond, Wilmington, uh, Columbia, Atlanta, Birmingham, New Orleans, or Savannah, Georgia, hit me up and we can hang out in the next. Uh, we can hang out in the next six weeks. Dope. 
And this is going to be out on Monday or Tuesday, probably. So where are you going to be then? Oh, nice. Uh, I will still be in D.C. Yeah. Okay, I'm cool. in D.C. until Tuesday. Perf. Yeah. Sure. What you got going on? Yeah. Um, what do I have? I mean, I'm just constantly like working on posters and stuff. I just made one for a couple metro or one metro gallery show nice. for this guy Nick Hakim. Cool. Um, so I'll be like selling copies of the screen printed poster there at the show. Nice. So that's something I want to do more of. Is um, that a comic? That's no, he's a he's like a kind of like ethereal, like kind of like solely singer guy. He's really good. Oh, cool. Cool. In a couple bands. What about comedy wise? Uh, comedy wise, I got I got a show. This Friday, that'll be. This will come out after that. I don't have anything on the books right now, but you can hey. follow me on Instagram at Minor Sympathy, on Twitter at. That's Link. you, dude. Yeah. That's Minor Sympathy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I see them liking our posts. I'm like, who is Minor Sympathy? Them. <laughs> it's you. Them. Them. I always assumed them's it was yeah. them, dude. You're them. <laughs> I but prefer them. You, hey, them, you them. can't spell them without me. <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Then it'd just be T H with no C. Oh. You can see my work at uh, jordanlevine.carbonmade.com. It's my website. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Jordan hire, Levine. You know, hire me for stuff. Hell yeah. What you got going on, Eric? What are your uh, plugs list telling you? October 13th, uh, they're opening up a new room at the Motor House, and I'm doing a show in it. Well, Wait, I'm not doing a show, but I'm on a show. In Baltimore? Yeah. Isn't that across from the artist? Didn't Chris Rock's brother do that show there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. That was a that good was time. Cool. Um, but uh, so that so that room that he did the show in got turned into a bar, mm-hmm. and now there's like a the green room that was back there is like a mini performance space. Oh, sick! Okay, dope, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, yeah October thirteenth, um, which I might not be doing anymore because I see my. I have another thing in my calendar for that day. <laughs> it's a chili, What's the other thing? It's the Chili Brew 11. It's me and Elizabeth are signed up to make a chili and beer to compete in this competition. So mm. I might not do that set. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, dude. So maybe maybe I'll do October 8th at Mount Vernon Marketplace. I'll see what happens. Right. Bingo. Dude, I got uh, I got nothing cool coming up. I'm playing at McKeldon Square tomorrow, but that's that's You're not. You're playing music. Yeah, I'm playing music tomorrow cool. at McKeldon Square. I don't really know what it's gonna be about. Um, it's a Friday. I'm playing. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, this, is kind of fucking weird. I'm playing tomorrow in McKeldon Square, which is like by like Monument Street in Baltimore, I uh-huh. believe. I actually haven't looked it up yet. <laughs> but I believe it's, it's in GPS that. Is I believe it's in that <laughs> that shot. area. And I'm playing at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So who the fuck knows what that's gonna be? Do you have about. a gig tomorrow night? Nice. Yeah, I do. Fuck. But I don't wanna. I don't wanna say what it is. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we played in a nursing home one time, like mm-hmm. in the middle yeah, of the afternoon. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'm playing at my aunt Debbie's tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> dude, hell yeah. Well, the, well, they, her, they're, my my uncle, not like my actual uncle, but he's like kind of my uncle. They're like pretty rich. They're throwing a surprise party. They came out and saw us play. At Dude, a you're ruining the surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. was a huge fan. So he just he just hired me and Mike to play there. Well, it's cool. It's cool. Hey, I mean, it's a living, right? Yeah. Living. But anyway, yeah, McKeldon Square tomorrow. That's awesome. For those Dude, listening, yeah. it's going to be you, two days ago. You got booked. Yeah, you get I'll a t- let you know how it if goes. If you want to see us, get a time machine. <laughs> Come back. Come back. <laughs> uh, fucking... Uh, Got to shout out Laughable. Got to. Laughable is uh this is this is uh this is my best attempt at giving you guys a professional shout out here. What's Laughable? It is a Uh excuse me. Would you please tell me more? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Laughable is an app that is uh soon to be available on Droid, I believe. That's what they keep telling me. I'm looking forward to it cuz I have a fucking Droid and I still don't have Laughable, but I believe it's a great app. It's a good app. What it's is it? It is a fantastic. It's, uh, it's like a podcast. Is app. it like mozzarella sticks? Uh, Very much so, in the sense that if you that we don't go have to any. live from the studio and click on my name, you'll be like, "Oh, here's his profile. These are all the other podcasts he's been on." Bingo. But cool. hey, don't stop at me. Go look at actual famous people that you want to listen to on podcasts. It is a glossary for and comedians. Click on that. It's yeah. really, it's oh, really cool. smart. It, like, or aggregates index. tour dates index. and stuff, and it you know it's. 
it's honestly it looks cooler and is sleeker than the new podcasting app. For yeah, it's gonna take iPhone. over. It really is. Ned McKinney, shouts out to you, dudes. Shouts out for you letting us on that uh, network. Shouts out um, for uh, great uh, designers think alike. Yes, lobster font, dude. If yeah, you're if your shit isn't lobster font, face. bro, <laughs> lobster <laughs> font. You might as well be fucking Tony Viagra, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Tony fucking Viagra. <laughs> Tony Viagra. Oh, man, I thought for sure my mouse is going to be on a song. Just give me a second. Damn, dude. Until <laughs> next week. You better peter out. So, yeah. Well, we're going to put a sound on it on anything like that. I know we both ain't into relationships. So, this is what it is. That's my friend, that's my friend, that's my friend. That's my friend. Yeah. We better fit, yeah. For money, that be the topic. Yeah. Love the way she move and work her body. Yeah. Every time we sell, we end up catching her body. That's some real attraction, take it right to the lobby. But look another room for two, proceed with caution. We be turning up too much, like that's an option. We be turning up too much, the only option. I be in the crib, school and work, she be in a skirt. Waking up off the ear, city clerk. Staying late, working overtime just to pay the bills and buy what she likes. She red bottom up, Louis V down. Got the pride of stylist on speed dial. New E class bins, soon and put it. Bad with the buzz, but she buzz from music. That's my friend, that's my friend, that's my friend